Hi, everybody. Nick Blazer back with the round of four in the undefeated bracket of the World Backgammon Championships here in Monte Carlo, Monaco. And we're going to have a really exciting matchup today for you between Zdeniak Ziska and Wilcox Snellings. Should be one of the strongest matches of the weekend, I'm sure. Super excited for this one. Really excited that these two ended up running into each other in the semifinals of that undefeated bracket. On the other side of it, we have a really great match as well. It's uh, Sander Lyloff playing against Benjamin Lund. And we're actually not going to have that one on stream so that the documentary crew can keep capturing that in the playroom. It's really cool, like, atmosphere with people standing around and kind of kibitzing and all these things. So, um, unfortunately, a little better for the footage there, but... On breaks and stuff, I'll see if maybe I can run over there and get some some live updates or something like that. Um, we'll figure something out as we go there. Um, ooh, someone in the chat asking if there's a calendar somewhere of all the upcoming events. I think it's, if you mean other tournaments? Ooh, maybe not. But uh, if you mean all the upcoming streaming for this tournament here, it should continue through the rest uh, through Saturday and Sunday at 2 p.m. and 10 p.m., I do believe. I actually don't know exactly what the schedule is for tomorrow, as soon as we find out. But watch on, on the Facebook, there's a Backgammon World Championship group and event page. And every time we, we have schedules or anything like that that we're releasing, we're, we're posting it there. Hi, everybody. Guess we can talk about all the gear, too. So that Backgammon... Galaxy 2.0 app finally released in the Apple Store. Go get that if you've got an iPhone. And then uh, you got to wait a few days, I think, for the Android Google Play Store release. Um, we've been seeing the Tempest Clock here and there on the stream. I don't think they're going to play with it on this match. But uh, you can check that out. A new, It's like a, a stand that holds a phone and uses the gyroscope to... Uh, to see which side is on on roll so it's or sorry um which side's on action on the clock i guess uh it's a cool little thing fits in the board probably travels nicer than a regular clock so check that out once we get to the board you'll see that we're playing on the Marni carlo grand prix board which is available in the galaxy shop now really nice uh high quality version of the of some of the boards that we've been putting out through up and gammon well, I haven't been talking about myself at all either. I uh, I have a YouTube channel, so go over and subscribe to that and check out those videos if you like them. Um, I appreciate that, and I teach lessons, so easiest way to reach out to me is on Facebook, but I have an email that I can check to that's uh, attached to the YouTube. So, yeah, if you want to work out on your game together and think... I like explaining it. I like teaching a lot. It crosses over a lot with the commentary. But it's been fun. We're in a rhythm here now. I think we got a lot of the stream like protocol figured out and we're ready to go cruising so I, it does sound like too i wasn't 100 percent certain if the undefeated finals would be tonight i do believe those occur we got a long way to go in the fighters bracket so it's possible that the undefeated folk uh champion basically has off tomorrow and then we just clear up the second chance bracket and get to a finals for sunday morning oh thanks Gita. Hi there. What else we got going on? The Stream 2 matchup. I've forgotten what it is here, but it's uh, something from the second chance. Should be, it looks like I see Gaz Owen walking in there. So probably his match, whatever it is. I'm going to go... Uh, I can almost see it from here. Bill's like directly this way doing the Stream 2 commentary. Go peek over his shoulder. George Lazarus, maybe? Norwegian? Uh, yeah, asking about the undefeated final. That should be the, the match that we're streaming tonight at 10 p.m. We'll figure out exactly how we're going to do that, too. Um, but one of these two playing the winner of Sander Lyloff and Benjamin Lund. So we are in for another really exciting matchup for sure. It's not always that, like absolute top players of the field rise to the top like this, but we got a really tough top four in the undefeated side for sure. Right. 
still plenty of uh, lesser known players on the on the second chance side. So we could still see some excitement that way. I like to see matches like that too, just because, you know, I don't know. It's still a game of of dice and chance, so you can show up and not be the best player and still win the tournament for sure. Nice to see that occurring every now and then. 2 1, we've escaped the checker, so we're less inclined to hit loose and give away that advantage, the racing advantage. Um, but he's going to go for it anyway. Yeah, they tend to run close, but 24 to 21 is a very strong um, option there as well with the racing lead. Just more thematic. 2 6, this looks like. Oh, it's slotted. We can go for the tempo hit. It duplicates some twos. Interesting. Um, we don't particularly want to advance to the bar point and risk being hit while, while our opponent also covers. We create some hidden cover numbers there, too, like 6-3, ace-3, things like that. Um, this makes a lot of sense, too, to just make a bid for a more pure point. Rather difficult to find the call for such a deep hat hit and a tempo here, but... Um, Best option there, slightly missed. Fine style play, I think. And just one ace short of a perfect roll here. I think it's probably going to cover the points before it... Uh, oh, interesting. I didn't even notice this, uh, that it can make the uh, make the five and hit loose. Um, my instinct would have been to make the four and advance up to the 21. But Wilcox finds this best play pretty quickly. Nice stuff from him. Three in, six out, looks like. I'm not sure I see much else. Oh, but Benny X is going to slow down and think about it. And sure enough, coming down to the bar point is a little going for some offense. Interesting. Outboarded. That's a really hard one to find. These are some strange opening plays so far. Three, six links up. Solidifies ZZ's position in a lot less trouble now. But Wilcox still with the advantage in this game so far. 4-2, mostly escaped, I guess. Making a bid for freedom makes a lot of sense. Yeah, this is interesting, too. Why don't we... I guess we have the stack of six, which is a lot of incentive. Um, and we don't think our opponent's all that likely, I suppose, to break the 16 to hit us. Kind of likes having that anchor. Um, but I'm sort of making reverse logic for this one. I'm not sure I would find creating an extra blot here for some reason. Just advancing to the 14 seems like it's playing into the racing game plan most effectively. But a uh, really nice find from Wilcox there. And look at this. Part of the value of the position is that, uh, or play, is that Zdeniak should just focus on making his board and keep his anchor instead of risking opening up against the, the better board here. But he gets a double sixes fan from the bar, hits, gets to cover the nine. And this time Wilcox enters from both, but is in under pressure from a lot of pointing numbers. 6-5 is going to make the four point, but would have loved to be pointing on head. It has the option of pointing on head. Can make the three point, but that leaves a blot in the outfield, strips the eight point, makes an inferior point. Is it all worth it to put one checker in the air? Probably not. <laughs> Looks like he's going to find this solid play. Maybe he'll take a look at the other first. There's some good duplication of fives. A lot of, I mean, Wilcox is pretty happy to to enter and make the anchor, so maybe he's not so likely to hit that checker in the outfield, but the distribution just looks really poor. Doesn't seem like it's going to build all that well. Like the four-point long term is just too much better. Doesn't really slow our opponent down from anchoring. Cost him much. We'd rather be hitting on the five point if anywhere. What is this? This is uh six three. Okay, yeah. We got to pick one. Either we're running around the bend or playing to the midpoint. This is less under the gun, but Zdeniak still sees it. Rolls a six four and hits, and now he's in the advantage in this game. Five four. Yeah, just gonna play a checker down behind, and now with full freedom and a racing lead. Uh, doesn't have the better board, but has a lot of any point-making numbers, safety up, things like this. A lot of threats on Zdeniak's side. And it looks to be still enough play for, for Wilcox against only a two-point board, likely to be able to anchor somewhere along the way. Um, but that's kind of his best plan, so... 
So Zdeniak definitely has a cube here threatening to uh, prevent any sort of defensive plan from Wilcox. Scoops it up. We'll see what step is next. 6-3. I'm not sure this can play safe, so I think we're likely hit and lose somewhere. Interesting. I would have assumed that hitting on the better points was the idea, but we can reduce shots by hitting behind and sit on the racing lead a little more effectively, so... So 6-3 to three is the better hit here. Okay. 5-1 is going to anchor up, and now Wilcox is sitting with a comfortable... Comfortable, takeable position for sure. 2 1 likely covers for lack of other options. Look at this. We can play 8 to 6 for distribution instead. I would have just made the point as well. 6 2. Wilcox is just focusing on constructing some board as quickly as he can. Be ready for any shots he might get when. when while uh, Zdeniak's clearing the midpoint here, an 8 point. Down quite a bit in the race here, too, so even a set of sixes doesn't quite save him. Maybe now it does. Double sixes for Zdeniak is his best. Clears the midpoint safely. Six four. Looks like it's going to slot the four point. Or two down. Okay. Four one, probably two in, but I guess it creates odd an odd number of checkers outside, making a lot of our big sets a little worse. Um, but I'm still inclined to to take the shortest path I can find towards clearing those two outfield points. Zenyak chooses to stay even and avoid the disaster rolls instead. Five four is going to clear naturally from the rear. All right. Wilcox is starting to have dilemmas between making his board and being ready for contact or saving gammons. I think the gammon save is going to be easy enough that he can afford to make the four point there, but they're both going to be close. Shouldn't have trouble making it later either. Three, two. So if Zdeniak's going to stay with the theme of evening up, he should play six to four here. That looks a little awkward here. Leaves the spare and risks sixes and fives, okay. Double threes, yeah, I like the two off, keep the spare. I mean, we, we leave more shots with 6-1, 5-1. There's always this concept of double jeopardy to worry about. Yeah, one's going to come off. One's going to play to the deuce for sure, I think. Oh, no, four off is possible. Okay, just goes for that. The idea with ripping a lot of checkers off is that, like, while you might leave more shots, once you do, it's harder for your opponent to win anyway. You have so much off that they have a lot of catch-up to do. And so here... Six off, even if he leaves a such seven, eight, maybe a ninth off. Now maybe we have to safety up a little bit. Look at that. After he plays the ripping play last time, he's supposed to continue with that theme instead, and it's a little worse to clear from the six. And a little bit of gammon danger here now for Wilcox, so I think it makes a lot of sense to just spend that time saving it, but he stays for the contact instead, okay. Is that illegal? Three off, six to four, I do believe. We're gonna, I mean, we have six, five, six, four, five, four as shot levers now. So that spare on the four is quite important. I'm actually surprised he found the ripping play. I guess just because his opponent should leave so often probably makes a lot of sense for... For why he went for that. But uh, Wilcox stubbornly is staying for the shot. 
Uh, probably going to need a set Zdenek to, to win a gammon here. Looks like sixes are better. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. I'm sorry, you have four maps. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's okay. All right, and no gammon. Six four opening for Zdenyak. Looks like he favors the splitting play. Many even match scores, making the two point is slightly favored. Running's okay too. Always interesting to see players' preferences there. After a six splitting, the tempo hit on the ace disconnects the the back checker from making the bar. So nice find from, from Will. Fairly automatic second roll stuff. Five one can hit one of these checkers and cover, and he's actually supposed to uh, almost tied. But yeah, going for the five point to prevent the advanced anchor is a little bit better there, even though it leaves directs. Very interesting. Four six just going to continue and try to escape to a race now. Looks like the two is going to hit twenty four to twenty two, but it can also point on head. It can also hit in the outfield. Wow, options everywhere. So the four is hitting. Now, do we want a double hit somewhere? I guess this brings more covers down into the zone for the second checker up. Must be the idea. It's a nice blitzing theme, but it would have been hard for me to pass up on the on the hit in the in our opponent's inner board. And after a fan, I think this is enough to send a cube for sure. We got a ton of threats, right? We can just make a point and have our opponent only enter with one, and then we have a very familiar five splits kind of position. If they fan, you know, that's a big problem, too. We have nine in the zone instead of the regular eight. I don't think... He must think it's too good, and it is. Wow, I'm surprised that it can possibly be too good with only a two-point board here. But he's just so likely to improve that he takes a roll instead and figures he can cash later. Okay. And correct in doing so. I would not have found that one. And now pretty clearly too good. Two's going to hit five down. Great shot for Zdenyak. And so now Will's going to continue to have decisions here. Should he keep playing for it here with the improved board? Likely to get a four-point board. These are really tricky because they the, the combination of numbers leads it to it being better to play on for a gammon. But one concept that we use very often to determine whether we should play on or not is whether or not there's any sequences where our opponent can arrive at a take where we can lose the opportunity to cash the game. And here, I think we can see that happening a decent amount of time when Zdenyuk anchors. So a little scary to roll on. Feels like we lose quite a bit here. So like, is this still... I guess this looks pretty cashable. And yep. Shia too good now. Wilcox times the cube perfectly on that one. Still seeing A-level play from him. Showed up sharp this morning, it would seem. Uh, no, the two Danes on the stream, too. I, I explained earlier that uh, we've got a documentary film crew catching Sanders matches and uh, making a video out of that. And and the video from them playing in the playroom is just so good with like the crowd around and everything like that, that most of his matches are probably going to stay out here. Um, so unfortunately, we're going to miss that on the stream. Um, I don't know. If he, if he makes it to the finals, we'll have a problem to solve. You know, I'm not sure what we'll do in that case. But... Yeah, yeah, for now, they're just going to play in there. And I'll see if uh, if these players go on break. Maybe I can walk over there and get a Facebook Live update, something like this. Okay, anchors for both. Mutual holding game, pretty even. Um, usually, we want to play these simple, but we don't want to start. Yeah, I think behind makes a lot of sense here. Our opponent can hit us and, and make a point not too often. But in mutual holding games, our opponent's so hesitant to break their anchor to hit um, that it can be nice to, to make pure plays. The 2-1 just didn't look destructive enough for me yet, so understand ZZ's mistake there. Um, fours is going to leave them three pips ahead in the race. I think this is still just like contains. He does want blocking points at the race this even. 
He's not trying to clear yet, but he had a bit of a dilemma there, being slightly down in the race about how to keep contact, but the midpoint is plenty of contact. What do we do here? I think we've got to keep bringing checkers down for uh, flexibility, for mobility. And then the only four we have is six to two either way. I think we just look a little too, too stripped and inflexible when we cover the three point there. Would be happy to create that asset for sure before Wilcox makes an attempt at running or anything like this. Six four naturally makes the three. Now, there's a lot of matches going on in the main room that we should be catching. See if Ryan survives. If you're not already checking out those brackets on Draw Boss constantly, I mean, that's the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is look through all the matches again. It's exciting to see how many, how many are available. Fours could decide the game here. Clears the midpoint safely. Contact doesn't look too strong. 16 pip lead. Now 12. This is going to be enough for a cube. And Wilcox is going to have to figure out if he has enough contact to take this one with uh, very close on the racing side. Only one pip shy. So the contact should be enough for a take. Yeah. Yep. We have small double and small take here. <laughs> yeah, they both are playing just lightning fast here. Spend only a tiny bit of bank and gonna spend time when they need to. But there is this like odd tendency though when your opponent plays fast that you start to play fast too. Like you just I don't know, people mirror each other that way, I guess. Um so a lot of people when they're playing against really fast playing opponents have to remind themselves to slow down and not fall into the rhythm of their opponent, you know? Uh, two four and okay roll safe enough for his Denyak. Not exactly what he's looking for. Six five getting awkward, and Wilcox rolling his containment structure home naturally, looking really good. Five three out of time now, though. So really would like to get the shot now if he can. I don't think there's anything that leaves it yet. Six four is going to clear from the rear. Great shot from Zdenyuk. Maybe he'll be willing to run with one if he gets the opportunity, but. Double aces is just going to break the board and clean up the bot and blot in case he gets the shot. Doesn't want the liability in board. More important than being able to remake that potentially. This probably, I'm not sure how important making the aces. So I guess the, well, the six to two feels like part of it, but he chooses uh, to keep the spare on the six in case he has an awkward five he wants to play later, I guess. Five one it might save. Okay. And now Wilcox forced to leave with the six. Five three going to clear safely. Distribution looking pretty good for Zdenyuk here. And likely to cruise home to a two-point win. But Sets will get Wilcox right back into this. He's going to get out of harm's way. Interesting. Doesn't stay back for the contact. Uh, figures he's just paying off to two one ones, twos, things like this. And can lose what racing equity he has. Those decisions are very close. 4-1 comes into the six. When you're barely winning any games, you know, it's tough to pick which wins the most. Okay, so they're both playing lightning speed. And that's why I feel like I'm... I'm talking faster than I've ever talked on stream all week, okay? Okay, it's not just me, I guess. Yeah, someone in the chat saying it feels like Wilcox is a level better interesting. Um, maybe if you compared the long-term PRs, that could be true. I don't know, but... Um, both very, very top players for sure. I, I, I guess maybe both would be happy to accept that ex assessment just with for how long Wilcox has been in the game and continuing to improve. Uh, Zdenyak, you know, really strong but relatively younger player as well. So lots of potential to get better from here as well. But it's so close. I mean, at these margins, I don't, I don't know if you can even... If one of the players is, is the better player, I don't know what that translates to in match-winning chances, but not a whole lot. And Zdenyak hangs on for the two-point win. Seen a lot of Zdenyak's matches, and I've only seen one of Wilcox's this weekend so far, but Wilcox played a long 17-point match at like a two and a half and just looking very sharp this week. I think showed up in Monte Carlo at the Zay game.
And Zdeniak always capable of that as well. Really, most of the mistakes that I've seen from Zdeniak could be, you could call it style as well. Chooses to split instead of making the bar after his opponent runs one. Reasonable. Both run very close. 6-4, going to make the very nice anchor. Right in the center of any priming potential that Wilcox had. 6-2 is going to make a bid for freedom now. These players are both just so comfortable and playing so lightning fast. This is really exciting stuff. Uh, five must come down with the hit. Okay. Yeah, expensive coin flip is a good way to put it. That's how it gets toward the end here when, when you run into a good player. Most games that chances involved that happens. 5-4. Yeah, this looks very natural to just make the 4-point, but he recognizes that with his opponent on the 22, it's also nice to make the 9 and block escape. Uh, but the 5 doesn't look so nice along with it. Ahead in the race, he can just go for this too. Otherwise, he might consider the loose hit more seriously. Uh, they also happen to have equal boards at the time. Now he's got a little better. And pauses for just a half second to think about the cube and moves on. Reasonable here with, with a better board and threatening a single checker back. Wilcox could really use escaping to freedom to stay in this game, doesn't, and is probably going to have to let this go. Instantly passes. That's another point. I think we're going to be done with this in 30 minutes. <laughs> this is amazing. These guys are playing so fast. <laughs> they must really want to go watch the Sander match, too. I think that's what's going on. Ah, <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Four two points on head. 5-4 is going to make the best anchor. Double aces. Uh, our opponent's got an anchor, so Wilcox just instantly makes the 22. Not much else available out there. Fours is going to run. I wonder if they just made an agreement to play Speed Gavin beforehand. That could be. That's within their rights. They want to get out to the beach. Maybe they want me to get out to the beach. That could be it. 5-4 going to make the 4-point, but it could clear the, the midpoint as well. Wow, and that's better somehow. Good instincts to pause and think about that, but when we're ahead in the race and we just want to break contact of challenging points like that, he's got a perfect opportunity to do it. The 4-point not gaining him so much. Really nice find from Zdenyuk. I mean, it crossed my mind, but I don't think I'm ever making that play over the board. Um, that's going to catch Wilcox up in the race. Zdenyuk's going to... Pips in about two seconds there and realizes as well. Makes the bar point. Now he needs to contain that 22-point anchor. Uh, Wilcox looking for a way to advance. I don't think this is going to be it. Going to work on his board. Yeah, I fed him too much coffee, you guys think? That's a good, that's a good hypothesis. I like it. 3-2. Just going to play safe to the ace. Don't want to volunteer a shot against that four-point board when we have a one-point board. 6-4. Uh, Wilcox rolling awkward here, but maybe he can afford to play really loose and just leave a single checker on the midpoint here. Yeah. Very nice find with the five-point board. We don't mind if our opponent hits us in the outfield necessarily because we have a shot at the ace most of the time. And so 4-1, for example, not even going to consider hitting, going to improve our board instead. And the five prime might be enough to start thinking about a cube now. It's pretty hard to escape this safely even with the close race, three pips ahead, in fact. When we're primed like this back on the 22-point anchor, um, insta-pass from Wilcox, and on we go. Wow. These guys are efficient. For three at the leading score, we see Zdeniak choosing the splitting play. I can't remember what he does at normal scores. Might just be his style, but... Does tend to get better when you get into leading scores than the two down option. 3 1 is going to hit from the roof. 5 3. What does this want to do? It could enter deep and come down to the eight. It could split twice, but against the. Maybe a tempo hit's reasonable too with the builder in place on the nine point. Uh, leaning towards that for lack of other options. But they're all really close. Nearly tied. Okay. <laughs> they're pausing on the tough decisions let me think a little bit I'm going to be exhausted after this 5-4 oh we can anchor but we'd really like to make the 9.2 we could anchor and hit loose 
Uh, choose to just come in high and make the nine point. I like that offensive asset a little better against the against just eight in the zone. Uh, five covers, two can hit loose or make the anchor. Okay, both very close options again. With only eight in the zone, even though it's the 22 and it's primed, still has quite a bit of value. Denyek's got to decide if he wants to hit or anchor here and play positionally. Um, the hit seems clear. Where are we finding a five? Just coming out, right? I think we're just running. These are all really close again. Always tricky for me to decide whether I want to hop out with the earlier checker or the later checker. A lot of competing themes. It looks like we duplicate threes if we jump out 20 to 15. We play out 21 to 16. I don't see any duplication. But that's the favored play. Keeps, keeps the blots more linked up somehow. This would... I can find the logic for this play a little bit easier. I'm not sure what's... Oh, this doesn't duplicate threes. It's threes and fours. Okay. So, so no really duplication either way, but we're closer to home. Maybe we really don't like being in front of that stack either way, so that at least if we're back when our opponent is attacking, they're attacking from seven in the zone and having to bring the eighth down. Um, now being hit brings the eighth into the zone. There's a little bit of a problem with that. We shouldn't be too afraid of a blitz with our opponent having four back either. Tricky all over the place. Easy play for Wilcox to just make a second anchor. And now, with four back and no timings, Denyek's going to pause to think about the cube, and it's closer than I would have thought. At this uh, leading scoreline, especially, I would have just used that to maybe skate past the thought. I have trouble finding these early, like, proto-back game cubes for sure. It looks like our opponent's going to have a play a lot of the time. But again, the problem is that Wilcox has four checkers back. We've seen this weekend, and also the ace made. So you can't play these deep contact games with with uh with it, such a permanent impurity in your board like this um six five so he's immediately going to look at a way to run off the back anchor and try to improve his game to some other sort of holding game jumps out to the bar point and goes for extra contact by playing 13 to 8 instead of just running to the mid i like the look of this sees the whole board threatens shots everywhere and zeniak must have some market losers now very close to a cube Borderline on the on the initial analysis. 5-3 going to make the 5 point, it looks like. And if Wilcox doesn't do something, what does he need to do? I guess 5 goes to the mid and we hit loose. And that looks like enough. Maybe Zdenyuk still has threats from the bar here, but I think Wilcox can play this game and... And the threats don't even look strong enough for, for Zdeniak, so he's going to roll past, go for that distribution 6-5 to five after the hit. See how Wilcox performs here. Going to make two anchors again. And it's looking a little better, but it's also, again, for that impure ace point, a reasonable cube. And Zdeniak's going to find this one. And I expect Wilcox is still going to be able to create a take here, even though he can play this like an anchor game so often. He doesn't have to commit to the back game quite yet. He's not totally primed. It's going to be hard for Zdenyuk to improve those checkers on his 6 and his 5 to make more priming points. One of them's semi-dead to that, that goal. So this doesn't look like it's ever going to turn into a perfect prime in front of those two anchors. Um, and so Wilcox is going to pass it, though. Okay. One of the larger mistakes that I've seen him make all weekend and decides that he just can't float that made ace point. Tough to fault that. Hard to know when to take such deep contact games when you've got such a impure problem on your offensive side could be that for money that's a clear decision too and that it just turns into a take like that at the score but i doubt it i don't think score is having too much of an impact here hits and splits great shot for wilcox five three what can this do we hate breaking the eight to hit but tactically, it looks very nice to help us step up to the edge of the prime. Our other option, I guess, would be to enter deep and play 13 to 8 just for structure. Okay, and that's the option that he finds. Looks like a reasonable one, too. It's a dilemma. And now, oh, we can make the 10 point here, so that seems a little better. Otherwise, I'd be looking very closely at making the 5. The loose hit didn't really cross my mind. But even into a double shot, I guess he's... His opponent has a board point, but it's so nice in the early game to use that ace from the six point to make the best offensive point on the board. Um, 
The sluice hit doesn't really seem to rate. It's better than making the five point, at least. That's your offensive option. But, but why hit loose when we could make an additional offensive asset, especially when we're hitting loose against a better board? I, there must be some sort of tempo idea that he's looking for here, but I, there is a good amount of building from that builder on the 10 point too. So maybe he really doesn't want him to make the, I'm sorry, he's, that's his 10 point builder. I'm not sure. Surprised to see him find that play, but okay. Is Denyek's just going to anchor past and double sixes. This is going to clean up, bring one checker all the way around and probably down to the bar as well. And is that enough to have the racing lead? Yeah, by quite a bit. So he'll be looking to escape the last checker on the 24 next roll, and that means Denyek's going to be looking to contain it with something like two down here. Nice roll for him. And the fly shots aren't going to be punishment at all with two blots back in board. 6-5 escapes safely, though. And Wilcox going to have a cube on the next roll, and probably Zdenyuk still with a take for the contact. His board's looking fine. Plenty of time to fight against that midpoint. But look at this. The evaluation, it looks like the 24 pips is enough to just let this go. That's a surprise to me here. I, I will not be surprised to see Zdenyuk find a take here. It looks like, like still quite a bit of work for Wilcox to get this home, but, but I guess his spare distribution is really nice, and it's going to give him a lot of time to roll a set or a 6-5. So this is really as nice as it can be for, for Wilcox to, to bring home. We'll see if uh, Zdenyuk has that idea or not. I think the default here is just to snap take any anchor games like this. Um, they can be takes all the way up to like 50 pips if it's a uh, strip midpoint. And, and Zdenyuk knows, wow, that's a really nice find with the pass there. Not sure I would have found that one myself. Six four. Um, always better to make the well, generally better to make the two point. But at a trailing score, of course, a little more incentive. So Zdenyak should not split into this. But we've been seeing players split all weekend. Maybe with the lead, kind of encouraging them to play a different game. But um, looks like Zdenyak has an idea of the second roll play here and is going to play two down instead. Nice find from him. Five one is going to split himself for Wilcox with the racing lead. He does need to get the back checkers moving still. 5-4, going to make a board point for Zdenyuk. So now he has the board advantage and the racing lead neutralized. I'm not sure what the best is we can do with this, but I'm inclined. The 23-20 to 20 step looks really bold. I uh, I don't see myself finding that one. I would be more likely to play two down. 13-8 to 8 for distribution looks fine as well. But he's going to step into it and likely be attacked by Zdenyuk here. Uh, looks like, I think, six down and hit, but we can split with the hit. Okay, that's a nice find too. I am once again hitting on the pure point, I think, but he's finding this hit behind. I like this idea better when he was just trying to coast home to a safe race, um, but he still has to escape the back checkers here, so I think going for purity makes a little more sense than usual. And his hit in return, and the four is going to come out, I think, for lack of a better one. We don't want to expose a new blot with the racing lead as well, and just try to Work his way around. 2-6 fan. That's tough to fan on a two-point board. Wilcox instant cube with the racing lead. Half escaped. Uh, doesn't have the better board, though, so it looks very playable for Zdenyek. And it seems like we are seeing a bit of score adjustment where Wilcox is going to make sure he gets the cube in in time, and that's the size of it there. Not clear that this is a cube at a normal score for money. Um, by the numbers, it doesn't look to be. Eight and a half, I don't think... Is getting us like slightly over 70 it must be close but surprised by the magnitude of it at this score but i think with the better board and still a lot of work to do for for wilcox also only facing a two-point board so the blitz isn't too scary i think i think steniak's gonna find the take for for game and contact here but we'll see what he comes up with hey there cmc they're playing speed gamut except for cube decisions occasionally so uh you guys better be watching close if you want to keep up. All the way to 10 away, 15 away already. Wilcox with a seat pad there. Okay. Sounds nice. And Zdenyak going to take. Always good to spend some time on threatening decisions like that. With a big lead, you hate giving up four points. 
Um, so I want to make sure it seems like the right thing. And the hit and down, great shot for Wilcox. Zeniak on the back foot. Double threes is going to fix a lot, though. Uh, going to hit for and make the point for the tempo, for sure. And threatening to sweep up a bunch of blots if Wilcox doesn't perform well from the Barney fans. Okay, and with plenty of points left to go in the match, Zeniak, I think, has what looks like a pretty natural like recube claim kind of thing for for money and should he send it at the score look it's not good enough to send at the score because when the four cube goes over he can still win, win, win a gammon but they're going to be probably reduced a little bit in value even though they he can use them fully it's just that lead starts to take away from how much the next four points matter um, but the big risk is that wilcox has such a scary cube to eight uh, facing the recube in this game and still with a lot of turnaround potential, it's apparently XG thinks it's just much too dangerous of a weapon. We're going to reduce the value of our own gammons as well. But I'm actually going to be, okay, he finds the roll. He knows that about the score too. That would be a very easy one to incorrectly send early. And I wouldn't be 100% certain what Wilcox would do with it either. There's a little bit of uh, quote-unquote bluff potential there where he, it's not utterly unpassable. Enters high, situations improve for Zdenyuk. So just having seen the numbers, this looks like this should be a cube now and not too good. But I mean, generally I'd be much more inclined to play this on at this point. And it is technically. And a common theme with with leading scorers like this is that it's very difficult to land in that market window. A lot of times we are not good enough and immediately the next roll skate to too good. Um, so it's usually a nice policy to just continue playing and not even thinking about sending recubes at these scores. And he's going to send it, okay, do the optional claim, and Wilcox knows to pass it. Insta drops really makes me feel like maybe he was ready to pass the last one, too. I, I think he could have created a pretty massive blunder there if he sent a... Not even a massive blunder, I guess, but uh, in error nonetheless. And what's going on here? Are we taking a uh, small break, or is he just standing up for a second? He's taking a break. I'm going to go Facebook live stream Sanders match for a second. Man, how do you find that no double take the roll before, though? This is really good stuff by these players, playing really clean stuff. Okay, I just can't stand it to not know what's going on with Sanders match. So I'm going to go stream that live from the, from the World Championship uh, Facebook page, and we'll be back when we're off break. I'll let Bill know to come get me when they're ready. Be right back soon, guys.
the World Backgammon Championship Facebook page, live streaming a bit of Sanders' match, some updates on other matches there. Uh, everything in early stages so far. Of course, 9-2 to two is miles ahead of any other scoreline <laughs> for the speed game they've been playing. But uh, yeah, Sander warmed up the hands to get that hit. That was, that was a lot of fun. I loved it. <laughs> That was uh, Ryan and Mochi were talking over there almost as though though the match had finished and, and Ryan did not look disappointed. So maybe he actually won the match or maybe they were just in a good spot after a game there. I'm not sure. Getting a little coaching. Kind of want to capture that on the, on the camera too. But we're about to get started again with Wilcox and Zdenyuk. Well, I got called over a moment early. What is this about? No Wilcox and I'm here not streaming the Sander match. Brutal. What do you want, Rory? <laughs> I can bring you some lunch. Uh, no, I'm cool. Yeah, I appreciate I'm it. No, I'm okay for now. Okay. I probably won't eat till like, closer to five. Okay. No, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Nice of you. That's what I was doing. 20 minutes. Oh, you know what? I will take a burger and fries, and it can sit cold on the table until I'm ready to eat it. That's no cheese is quite important. Not the first. What's your name again? I am Nicholas Daniel Blazer. Does anyone else in chat want a cheeseburger from Rory? He's ordering. Get him. Oh, he says no fries? Wow. It doesn't come with fries. He just doesn't. Okay, okay. <laughs> Didn't see how that ended up, though. He was uh, Sander was still on the ropes in that game to uh, potentially lose a game. Probably going to save a lot of them with that hit, but also going to lose the game often with the crash board that he had. Benjamin entered right away. Hard to claim it with checkers off in an open six point, but he could turn it around and end up even in that score line. Most likely outcome, I think, is 4-0 for Benjamin. We'll see how that goes. Bowl of pasta for Bob, okay. Hope you're in Monte Carlo to claim that. Well, feeling for bad for Will being down the match. I don't. Here's the deal, guys. If you play backgammon, you're going to lose backgammon a lot. This is how it worked. Did he just put on? Sunglasses or something? I don't know. You got to laugh out of Zenyak somehow. Oh, no. Just glasses. Okay. Getting a little snack to eat there. But that's the game. You know, there's luck swings, and if you don't like that, you also lose sometimes. I mean, that's exactly what's fun about the game to me. So, I don't know. I don't really feel bad for people when they get unlucky on the dice, I guess. It's frustrating, but... I mean, it's... You couldn't count the number of times it's happened to both of these players with how much they've played, and it, it should feel fairly normal by now. Nine point feels very pretty natural. Okay, they both agreed to keep up the pace, so it seems <laughs> playing lightning speed still. Uh, four and 11 feels pretty natural with that heavy stack on the six. Would love to escape. Oh, he's going to look at the, the switch to, to buy a tempo, and there is a lot of threat with those 10 checkers in the zone and good distribution for improving, um, but it's just too nice of an opportunity to contain those checkers, make the 11 point unstack. Threaten to build that that seven points. Four one makes the five point. Great improvement for Will. Six four gonna oh it can make the bar point. Okay, my first instinct was to make a bit at running, but it has a little better option. And six three I think is gonna be forced. What is it gonna do? Oh, down too much in the race to escape a checker, so he's gonna stay back for contact. Zenyak's not even gonna think about the cube though. I think he must be close. This six four with how close it was last time has to run. Pretty sure, and then the game will be nearly in, uh, uh, resolved, and then I think he'll have uh, some cubes to think about. But yeah, also, being down 9-2 to two in this game, I mean, there's a whole bunch of dice and luck to come. So far from out of it. I mean, we've got those percentages, I think someone might have said, was it CMC in the chat said like 70-something, uh, 78-22 or something? Um, okay, double, quick cash and will. No one needs to think about it, nearly too good. I imagine that he did cruise past the cube the roll before then. Um, it was an improvement that he made for sure, but to be too good now, 
I think a little too conservative with the initial double. Was right to wait on the on the redouble, but the redouble is a very different beast than the initial cube. He can afford to get a four back and still play that game out. Um, but okay, two down for Will. What I was getting at was 78-22 as well. Is just 22% um, happens in backgammon like all the time. We have we have 22% match like game winning chances in games regularly and turn them around through a match. Like that'll happen a couple times in this match for Will, I'm sure. Um, if it hasn't already, so yeah, big swings, dice game, lots of fun. Don't feel too bad. Uh, opponent has an anchor, so required to split. It's actually kind of close against 11 in the zone, a little bit scary, but has the better board to do it with too. Happy split now. Hoping for something to step a little further. Ooh, fives is going to be a real problem, I think. I mean, it can make two points, but he's... Uh, neutralize the race but completely out of timing and needs to anchor next or be in a lot of trouble i think for that reason zdeniak should be happy to let him play instead of uh going with the blitzing play while outboarded um very natural to look at that and think well i can hit two why not but the checkers are where we want them right now they're primed and so he's just going to play the quiet eight to three is as awkward as that looks i might find the double hit for lack of better options um that looks very strange to play to the three but finds the best play, and then Wilcox just angers past. A great roll for him. And a great roll means they're in a 50-50 game. What do we have here now? There aren't a whole lot of safe plays, especially long-term. So, yeah, I, I don't fault looking at this. We really don't want to leave a shot against the four-point board with the racing lead. Um, but this is a little too long-term destructive. We're giving up a landing spot for two points that we're going to have a really hard time bringing home. And so we do better to just make a bid at getting one of them home now that we're out of time instead. Maybe I would be tricked into leaving the the double shot by playing 18-8 to eight and solving the further back. But when we're hit, we like to have the anchor. And two down is only a single shot. Going to look at... So this option where we leave a single shot but um, don't actually clear any of our points like we want to... Has to be inferior to two down from the mid, but it hasn't looked at breaking either of those points yet. Very interesting. About to hit the clock, we'll see. Scratch the chin. Rethink. <laughs> I'm surprised he hasn't even considered those other plays, though, yet. If he's trying to visualize them, maybe he's just looking at his alternatives and how bad they are, and that's all he needs to convince himself that he should leave one of the back points, but okay. Finds this destructive play again. I, unfortunately, I think it fits the theme of the position. Makes us some... Um, Understandable mistake. Yeah, one back. Okay. And Wilcox is going to do this and count the race. And this is an opportunity to stay back for contact now with the with that destructive play that Zdeniak made last move. Very interesting. That's a tough one to find as well. Really maximizing the position. But of course, coming all the way around with the racing lead must be strong too. And he's going to be feeling that miss now. Just like, oh, I don't have any room to move this position anymore even though I'm ahead in the race. What do I do next? It's not ahead enough. Well, I didn't comment on which hit. I'm not sure how I missed that one. Sorry, guys. Probably because they're playing really fast. <laughs> All right. Only nine pips ahead in the race. I think he still wants to uh, make this contact breaking play, especially since it uh, creates a bunch of freedom to move those spares on the 11 uh with the super close race denyx is gonna look at just breaking contact with a single shot while there's a ton of blots behind but i think once he realizes that it's even afterwards he's gonna find that well contact actually favors me and probably try to stay for it a little bit longer um unfortunately the best he can do with that is make the ace and slot the five or four or it's only the five and so for the weakness of the offensive contacts play, he's really thinking about this. Maybe he's off slightly in the race and thinks he's like a full 10 pips or something further ahead than he actually is. Um, not sure here. But if he sees the even race, usually usually when we're not favored in the race, we we like to stay for contact. So, and, and getting to an even pip count means that he's actually down in the race slightly. Will doesn't even think about whether or not he wants to hit and cover, just goes for it. Gets hit back with one of the best hitters. Hits on the four and covers the ace. Stenyak in the driver's seat again now. Um, but has to fade some some hits from the roof here. Four, six, not one of them. Just comes out and tries to get the freedom with a decent race, okay? 
Uh, less shots here, too. We're going to get pointed on ahead and attacked quite a bit when we stay back on the 21. A little counterintuitive sometimes, but that's the best he has to make of that roll. 3-4. Um, it can either make a five-point board, a board point, and continue to volunteer a shot, or just safety a checker with, with eight pips ahead in the re lead. Uh, eight pips ahead in the race. I think it makes more sense to play for safety now. And given his tendency last roll, I expect him to find this again. But the plays run really close. Look how close it is to just make the five instead. Double fours is going to make a new favorite. And look at this, six to two because we've got the racing lead. And all we want to do is uh, get a fan out as Denya can cash this. Uh, but he enters with double sixes. Wow. These guys are rolling well. Which checker is he going to bring in? Um, with only a 12 pip lead in the race and a little bit of wastage, he's unlikely to have a cube next roll. But he could if Will rolls poorly. Double fours. That's going to take over the racing lead, so Zdenyak can uh, keep playing on for sure here. And both of them is just going to be one sequence away from a cube, almost exactly even there. Oh man, I lost my chat. Why did I lose that? How'd that happen? Do, do it again. Connect to the internet. Come on. Yeah. Let's go. All right, I can't see your comments for a minute, but I'll get back in there in a second. Four three, okay, some sort of transcriber issue, or maybe you made an illegal move, I'm not sure. Just needs to catch up there. Five two gonna bring two in. No one with a clear racing lead yet. First set's going to potentially win this. Six three two in. Small advantage for Zdenyuk. Six five in. Little advantage for Wilcox now. And uh, takes three checkers off, but not on not, uh, very many pips. And so small advantage for Wilcox. I don't think it's enough for a cube yet. Uh, yeah, we're getting close. Not all the way there yet, though. Okay, I'm back on chat. Checking in. Can someone tell the day or stream in which I can see Mochi's game? I think uh, day one of the World Championships had it. Had a game between him and Sander, actually, of all people, wasn't it? Or was that in the Super High Roller jackpot? I can't remember. It's been a few days. Earlier. And what did he roll there? I missed it. It's uh, now in 70%. The, not sure I would find this necessarily, but um, what do we have? We have uh, a three-pip racing lead at 42 to 45. Uh, we can see the EPC, the, the wastage favors, favors Denyak a little bit here. Though I don't see a ton of it. So three pips in a 42-pip race should be... Five pips is a point of last take. So yeah, the trice formula, I think, gives us uh, an initial cube and should be a fairly easy take for Zdenyak to find. Three, two, two off. Three, one. Um, maybe six to five for distribution here. We really don't like shuffling the checkers anywhere else. Not a good ace. Double threes is going to improve the lead for Will. And Zdenyak needing a large set soon. 4 2 2 off. Six four, another nice shot. And Zdenyak going to need a big set real soon. Double two is not big enough. So fives or sixes next roll. If he gets there. Oh, 3-1. He's got a little bit of uh, ace vig from Wilcox here, too. Six is... Oh, man. Rolling like a champ. Not giving Wilcox any opportunities to get on, on the board. Here it is. You know, you got to play your A game. They're both playing amazing. Look at those PRs. Under three each. Uh, that's going to give you your best chances of winning a tournament for sure. Um, but it's... I mean, it's a dice game in the end, and 
if you're the one rolling crazy racing games and just taking them over and hitting your 25 percent all over the place like that's realistically how you win tournaments you got to see the good side of your your luck for sure exciting for zdeniak for sure works hard at his game and definitely deserves something like this so exciting to see it going this way of course wilcox not out huge deficit at five away 15 away a lot to overcome aggressive cubes coming in for sure soon uh four in and then do we just play three down or step in trying to make an anchor i don't think we want to step into harm's way so i like to leave the back checkers where they are and just cleaning up a blot is actually a little bit stronger to try to fend off the splits a little bit longer five three is not going to hit anything so survives one more roll for sure and maybe he could have thought about a cube before that roll anyway I'm surprised he didn't trailing so much Six out, four hits, okay. Zdeniak in a much better position in this game now. Five, one, doesn't hit anything. Awkward rolls all over the place. I think we still have to just enter high. And what other ace do we have other than 24 to 23? Um, we don't prefer to play that ace, but it's better than creating another blot and allowing our opponent to escape for tempo, with tempo. But So he's going to consider the option for, for the preference to stay put there. Um... 5-4 looks like it's going to make a board point. Six one is going to make the bar point, I think, but it could escape a checker if he's ahead enough in the race. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Oh, it should just go for the blitz. Okay, I really like this. This is very thematic. Our opponent's threatening to escape a checker and get into a much more simplified game. We've got 10 in the zone in the better board. Um, we're not trying to prime, so why not go for the attack? Buy a tempo, step up 20, 23 to 22. It's a little hard to find. It's uh, a bit strange to, to hit loose when we have all these other constructive options, like escaping a checker or making a point. And looks like he missed a cube there again. small one though and Zdeniak just gonna fi fight for safety here comes around the bend could just clean it up but um makes a bid for mobility instead this is a tricky one because we don't want to be a hit loose with threes and eights um but good find for him controls the outfield a little better for sure i think we're attacking now is uh wilcox bringing a checker in the zone and i think he's gonna sail past his market if this works double threes fans and maybe okay he's gonna claim again with the cube Doesn't even consider it too good. I don't think there's any way Zdeniak's thinking about a take here for real, but I'm going to spend a little clock time to make sure and let's it go. Moves on to the next game. And Will Cla Wilcox, one more point on the board. Nice improvement for him. All right, and where did this position start? 5-3. Links up with the mid after splitting and then comes around and leaves the bot outside. Yeah. Go for the building in the early game. A little scary to leave the shot, so Wilcox can hit with the double threes. Doesn't have a stronger option. Brings the builder down into the zone. And it's going to have a strong cube depending on the response here, too. Uh, making the five points probably plenty, but maybe still enough. Half escaped. Threatening to point on head. No racing lead. This must be borderline, though, and, and Wilcox is going to move past it. Understandable. And would have been a small error to cube, but but right on that borderline, a fan's likely to move his market. Maybe this does, too. Ace point is uh, a little beat up. I think the cube's coming here. The Okay, the tempo hit. We we need to, once again, fight to not let that checker in the, outside, in the outfield get home to safety so easily. Um, a theme that we're seeing in this match that, that I tend to miss here. 13 to 8 is just a bit too passive. Yeah, if you haven't been keeping up with uh, Zdeniak's blogs, go, uh, vlogs, go check those out. Really cool. His uh, girlfriend doing a really good job of editing them and uh, 
adding music and cuts and all these things that make them look a lot more professional. And Zenyak does find the tempo hit. Great find. And this should still buy a cube from, from Wilcox. And we're going to have to see if after the tempo hit, if Zenyak still feels like he has a take. I, I imagine he will with the good structure. Lots to clean up and roll home. And he still has the 20-point point anchored uh, to save him. But it's a little bit scary, these one-way games at such a massively leading score. Um, but I have seen Wilcox miss some of these aggressive cubes too, so it's possible that it just won't come. We'll see if he's studied his past matches, then um, maybe he'll see that he missed a couple of these and adjust for, for this particular match. That wouldn't be completely past me. Usually when I'm at a tournament, I'm a little nervous to study like that, especially when he's on a, a winning streak like he is and playing such good PRs. Probably hasn't checked it in. ZZ going to snap take this one. Okay, he knows where he's at. Good for him. And can he find an ace from the barn? No, but he can come around the bend here and put a lot of pressure on improving the position. We'll see how Zdenyuk follows up. 6-1. This is really good somehow. Does it make the... I think it's got a hit, right? I mean, how do we not hit? Takes a checker out of the zone, even though we have that back on the ace. This doesn't prime all that well. Makes a bit at escaping. I think we've got to try it. But yeah, a little afraid to make this play at a leading score holding a two cube. Doesn't want to deal with the gammons when he's hit from the roof. I guess the fives and aces, or the aces are a little bit duplicated, but there's fives in the mix too. A lot of numbers are going to hit that checker, but, but the best way to not get like gammoned and closed down and all these things a lot of times is to just take a checker out of the zone like this. This has uh, got a lot of value. Still has a good board, can still win this game too going forward. Ace is going to hit, I think. Well, it could anchor and hit, but I, I'm still inclined to hit from the back. And look at that. It should. should see the light instead. I would uh, for sure be thinking 24 and then continue to the 21. And Wilcox going to find the best play again, as he often does. Uh, doesn't risk as much. 4-3. Yeah, best choice we have is just come out to the bar and try to escape. Okay. Needs to dodge sixes and aces. Can't do it. Sit with the three, and Wilcox is going to park that blot there instead of clean it up and continue with the attack, ideally. Interesting decision that he made very quickly. I think covering the ace has a lot of value here. Oftentimes, once we put a blot back there, we'd rather have an asset in the ace point than a liability in a blot. And this is going to allow him to a little more freely hit in the outfield should he get a chance. 6-4, what is this going to do? It can hit loose, or it can make the seven. What's our plan here? We're... Running out of timing for something like priming, though it looks a little better, so maybe it's a little better to go for the attack. Okay, and this is the game plan slightly, but they're very close. Very close. 5-3, uh, another timing decision where I think you should just run somehow. And tactically, there's a little bit more value in the 8-5. to uh, must, uh, what is the, uh, duplicates fives that attack on the ace in some way, I guess. The twos aren't good anywhere else, so it does create a new class of... Good numbers, as Chris Trencher likes to say. Nothing better here than to roll the prime forward. Might have found that two down play, but a uh, good find from Wilcox to make the four-point board. Four seems like it's going to come around, and maybe the ace can step up, even though it you know, tempts our opponent to attack with fives and fours. It gives us two numbers out, which is a pretty big improvement, especially if our opponent makes the bar point. Now he's uh, forced to hit loose instead, and zdenyek has got twos for turnarounds here. No such luck this time. Okay. 6-5 going to cover from the 13. Very nice shot. No ace in for Zdenyak. Would love to do that to make more containment points and get checkers moving around and save some gammons that way. Ace is going to see a little bit more light and try to escape for Wilcox. Make sure he doesn't get stuck behind those three points. And 5-2. Going to make a bid for mobility, sure. And then wants to keep pressure on that blot, give productive aces, so going to stay back. Risks double ones, I guess, but it does anyway if he steps up. Double twos is a fan. 6-3. This looks like it can come out, link up on the 16, and maybe just play in or play around. This Both these seem fine. This does make double ones a lot stronger, but I think a lot of times we can't just focus on anti-jokers like that. Makes our own four is a problem to stay back on the six, so or sixteen. Six five. 
Maybe we can take one more checker or chance at hitting that checker on the 15. If we do that, I think it's 13 to 8, 9 to 3. Otherwise, we just play both around. Thirteen to eight seems to be part of it. Oh. Sixteen to five is best? Oh yeah, that is a very nice place for the checker. Only leaves double aces. Not sure why we want to volunteer that if we're not trying to pick up the checker anyway, but apparently it's worth it somehow. Very strange stuff. Somehow we don't even see on there sixteen, ten, thirteen, eight. I wonder what the problem with that play is. That is, I feel like, the most intuitive play to most players to just play around. And break contact entirely, and that's what Wilcox does find. I definitely see the logic in that play. And double threes. Does this manage to close? It does. It does. Okay, a lot of gammons here for Wilcox to get up to seven points now. Ten away. Five away. Ten away is a much improved scoreline if he can get there. After the 15 away, ten away, five away he was before. Double twos. Does it... Well, we can still lose some gammons if we... Leave a shot. So does he need to rip here? Does he play more conservative and safe by playing off the five and even it up on the outside? 21, 27, 31 pips outside. I think if he doesn't leave a shot, he should be such a virtual lock to win a gammon that this safe play is called for. 5-1. With the spare distribution, I'm inclined to break from the back, but uh, clearing the five is right here again. Okay. Something I'm missing in my logic there for sure. Uh, four in, and we're gonna wait at least for one six one five in shot, five one shot. Either way, as long as all four pips are outside, thirteen to nine can't be too bad. Six two gonna clear safely, and it's a race to get off the gammon. Looks like uh, Wilcox should be a big favorite to win one, but Senyak entered early enough to to make a race out of it for sure. What does he have? Three and seven ten eleven crossovers to get off, and Wilcox left with ten. Needs to get a crossover out of every roll for sure, so I think he's going to play the two to the six and hold, hope to roll better next time. Most likely going to need a set as well, I think. 6-4, that's a nice shot to get two in. 5-3, two off. Double fives, okay. Is this just going to take all the crossovers? No, one of them can play to the ace to make the crossover smaller. And so now twos don't get one off, but threes are better due. And actually, that's been enough to cross it, uh, catch it up on its own. So I don't think there's any misses here. Even double fours are distributed right and just needs to fade a set from Wilcox. And he does. And just two points. Wow, great job to keep this down to a two-point loss instead of four. Uh, so we're going to go to 5 away, 12 away instead. Oh, cool, yeah, we got Ava watching, yeah. Mom's in the house. <laughs> Double fives, yeah. Five. Yeah. Four two makes a point. Good start for Will uh, Wilcox. 12 away, 5 away. Still a lot of doubling in for sure. 6 4 response. We can just run, but uh, makes the point instead, okay? 2 1. Uh, no option really but the slot. Otherwise, we're splitting into a blitzing structure. Double two is going to hit and make a point, or does it make the anchor at this kind of score? Both seem viable to me. Must be reasonably close. Five, six, in and hit. Going to continue the attack, and when this works, I don't know if... Juana Fan Wilcox has something to think about, but he has three checkers back and currently outboarded. Wow, is that close. Just going to roll past it, but... um. Okay, 6-2, huge improvement, and now Zdenyak needs to improve to stay in this game for sure. 4-2 uh, might be good enough. Ooh, but the 4 comes down and exposes a blot in front. Duplicates 4s at least. I think Wilcox has to find a cube here with these threats, but um, yeah, still easily take both for Zdenyak with 3 checkers back behind. Decent structure. That 24 point is just uh, for Wilcox is uh, a serious liability and going to take work to improve. <laughs> Sander Lund will not be shown later I did a uh, Facebook live stream A little update from that match 
we were watching Benjamin Lund with a uh, lead and and also coasting home to a potential gamut on a two cube, but Sander hit a late game shot, and I'm not sure where that one ended up. So early match, these these two are playing lightning fast, so we might actually get out in time to like see some more of that. Wilcox finds the double snap take from Zdeniak, had made his decision already. We'll see how we perform on the first sequence here. What happened here? Playing a little footsie. Lost his shoe under the table somewhere, it seems like. That was a fun break. 6-1. Going to hit two and go for the blitz with uh, the chance to hit that other checker and put it in the air. And a fan. That's a pretty brutal sequence for Zdeniak. On the ropes for a gammon already again. 5-2. Going to cover uh, with the five and step up with the two. Okay, sixes and fours hitting. Need some checkers in the zone, though, quickly. Zdeniak enters on the 23, threatening to anchor. 3-2. Uh, I think this needs to bring a checker into the zone. We like how we're distributed in the back right now. Uh, no need to think about anchors quite yet. Need to fade the anchoring roll from Zdeniak. Three and five cleans up. Pretty nice shot to uh, reduce liabilities. Thinks about going for the tempo and hitting and trying to win, but thinks better of it. And Wilcox under some pressure to continue the blitz. Will even go for it with some hitters. No. Oh, and an ace with it. This is uh, not a good roll at all. What is the best we can do with this? No available aces anywhere. And yeah, I was. We have a banana split kind of play. This is exciting. Um, since he has to volunteer, these are really hard to find too. This is the the most that he can reduce with the ace and shots that he's giving up. And he's giving so many indirects sides to keep the structure. But given that he's giving away the the tempo and so many shots anyway, he had an opportunity to go for breaking board points to hit. That would have been fun to see. Uh, points on the three. Do we escape a checker, bring the eight down? It's really hard not to have an eight point here. We could even think about doing both, but uh, my instinct would be to make the eight point. Oh, they're so close. Look how close those plays are. One of each really does make a lot of sense, too. Coming out and one down to the eight. Oh, and he, I didn't even look at this. This switching to the ace play actually has a lot of merit to it as well. Puts two in the air against a four-point board and buys them a lot of time to sweep up the rest of these blots, get moving from the back. That might actually be my preferred play if I spotted it over the board. It has the serious defect of killing the checker on the four-point, but lots of good options here and is going to have to spend some time looking at them all. Um, yeah, escaping a checker with the racing lead, of course, very nice, but it feels like when your opponent enters, you're under a lot of pressure with that big stack of five on the midpoint. No real strong way to develop it. So I'd have trouble with this one. Four three fan, so his play works out. I think maybe on a fan this is his best option. Uh four two, probably just getting mobility again. Maybe we can come out to the eight and play thirteen to eleven. Lots of duplication out there, but okay, just uh keeps it simple and runs. 5-1, going to anchor and hits. Okay, and Wilcox in a good position again. Down in the race, but I think Zdeniak has a hard time cashing in on his race safely. Has to leave a double shot already, volunteer it. Could still be blitzed for, uh, for a gammon with no anchor. And is hit immediately. Uh, tactically nice to clean up that blot 9-8. Maybe it's not doing that much. We create... I guess it's hard to see a strong difference between that and 18-17. Other than just one less blot. But he will tactically for a roll just clean up. It's kind of nice to have the sixes to attack on the 22. But maybe it's good enough to attack on the 23 anyway. Not sure what sort of roll is going to happen. Where that would be a huge factor. Uh, Zdeniak hits and gets to lift. Very nice response from him. And Wilcox enters immediately. Okay. Rolling a lot better in this game. In a lot of trouble if he's on the bar. But, but enters right away. 6-3 escapes. Very nice shot for ZZ. Ahead in the race and uh, sitting here with winning chances against an anchor game. Once again, just uh, hard to put a game to bet against this guy. 21 or 20 to 11 was my first instinct in this close race, but the blitzing game plan still makes a lot of sense, and he's going to find that instead. Okay. 2 5 is going to hit both. He is not missing today.
three one around and then i think we go for some diversification with 13 to 12. no direct shots from the bar oh we do have double fives from the bar if we park there so there's a little bit of incentive to advance to the 14 but just too valuable to go for an outfield point to try to bring this midpoint home three two is a fan and it's going to be very hard to find a recube at this score line but uh he's got a serious advantage now for money we'd be cashing this almost certainly maybe playing on too good three one yeah we're don't want to leave a direct five six from the bar if we can avoid it in a good position to use the 12 point to get home not in direct contact with the anchor looking pretty good Double aces. What is, I think this, yeah, I like the 12 to 10 idea. Get as close to home as we can and have the point that's least difficult to clear. I guess the other thought would be to just uh, advance a checker as far as we can and try to get one home. But uh, making the 11 just looks a little difficult to clear later if our opponent enters. Uh, so this seems to be the least contact we can make and maybe we have opportunities to switch for the 9, 8, 7 in a moment. Our opponent stays on the board or on the bar. Double aces. Okay. Entering's pretty strong. Gives Denyek a lot more problems. Eight to five, a little bit better to keep our sixes playing to a live point. And I. Well, I guess he might think that he wants his sixes out anyway, so there might not be a big difference, but. Um, so probably really small stuff there. Four, three. Wow, we have to make a lot of fly shots if we come home from the mid, so we can make the nine point. I like this. Two, six, three, five, and six, six. That's all we give up. Five shots seems to be the best we can do and makes our ride home a lot easier from here. Two, four. Maybe still going to get a checker moving anyway. Going to risk a lot of gammons, though. Um... I think Wilcox correctly playing for contact and wins here on, on a lot of these decisions, but but it really is scary that he might get to the Crawford game if we're not too careful with so many checkers back. Uh, this is interesting. I would just assume 13-4, to 4, but we can actually somehow take the opportunity to switch to the 7 and just volunteer fives out. How do we find that play? I would have for sure just tried to take my chances at clearing, but I guess we're so likely to leave a shot on the way home from this position anyway. And we're also priming that checker on the 24, so we do get a little extra value. Um, interesting play there. People saying it's hard to clear this. Uh, you must not have been watching the same match that I've been watching. It seems like it just takes a set. And it's just inevitable. But okay, yeah, getting a, a checker into the fight. I guess the real decision for Wilcox is, am I gaining on the contact value of staying back on the 24 still? Or do I need just to uh, run and count on my 20-point anchor? Stays for the wins. Not sacrificing too many gammons yet, I don't think. Or three plays in this way, and now 5-3-1 combos can point to solve the goalkeeper issue. Wilcox makes a five-point board. Could be the decisive role here a lot of the time. 5-2 is going to hit oh i love this play of switching to the ace too because our nine covers it and covers with direct sixes now and reduces the contact long term but the the five hit seems natural and i i wouldn't be too surprised if he finds four two with it the switch is not the most intuitive play um but he's looking at it he's trying to make his decision between it i think understandable in close plays 3-5 would have been hit the other way. Chose the right one. He just felt it. And now he is close enough to clearing. I mean, normal scores for sure we send this because it's our last chance. But Wilcox can take and is just too dangerous of a cube to send. Much better to just lose our market at this score. And he's going to roll on correctly. If he can clear safely, though, I think he will claim. All the gammons seem to be gone. Wilcox has done a good job of making progress and not making that a problem. Uh, position definitely hasn't gotten better for, for Zdenyak running out of timing, so he should roll on here, and he does. 5-4 is going to clear the 6. Okay. 
not coming home as smoothly as it seems like it should. Maybe last chance to do it safely. 5-3, that's pretty safe though. Minimizes the direct shots. Only an ace uh, stay alive for Wilcox. Uh, claim coming otherwise, and he hits it. Okay. Nice structure for him. Still has to fade entries on the deuce and hopping out with the five, so hope for his Denyek still here. But uh, big turnaround for Wilcox. Enters on the deuce right away. And Wilcox going to need to attack here, but can't. So he's going to have to focus on containment. Uh, 12 away. Well, uh, Zdeniak can only in one roll, unless it's double fives, of course, can only get to the 12 point. So uh, hovering around and seeing the whole outfield it seems pretty important. Um, it's hard to spread the checkers out here, though. So I think our decisions are basically between putting a checker on the 13 or the 12 is Wilcox, which one's going to cover the best. And it seems like it would be the 13. But, uh, oh, interesting. We can play to the 15 and the 3 and see more of the outfield that way, too. And he goes all the way around to the 12, stays on the double fives. 5-3 five, hops out. Great shot for Zdeniak. Needs to fade a deuce or an 8 for one roll. A 9, no good. That's going to play in from the front. And just trying to hop over contact 8 pips away now. And is that good enough to claim now? Huge favorite for sure. And Zdeniak going to pause to think about it again. But once again, I, I really think at these scores, it's just better to lose your market, get past, and, and claim that game later. And 3-4, down to an ace shot again. Let's we'll see if Wilcox can hit it again. He doesn't tend to miss either. Likely to make a game out of this. There he goes. And... Yep, going to have to play this game out. So leaves the distribution to try to close out the deuce. Survives. No deuce five, deuce six from Zdenyek. No board closed yet, though. So I think uh, rather than making the bar point, we can think about this, but we still lose the deuce six. We don't have any way to contend with that. Maybe we'd rather be hit on it. So I like this idea of playing seven to six to keep uh, diversified builders, but not leave the deuce five. Um, we can advance 14 to 13. Looks very nice. And then maybe it just keeps going from there to cover the deuce five out. But he's going to think about just slotting with it as well. Okay. I got an update from Bill that Sanders leading his final 9-4. to four. So I presume that means he turned around. Or maybe he lost two points and has just gone on a nine-point run. They're making more progress, catching up with this match a little bit now. And a miss from Zdenyuk. And that's the closeout. Should be good for a win from uh, Wilcox. Not a whole lot of gamins in here, but it's possible. Small percentage. Just trying to avoid disasters of double sixes and things like this now. Maybe he wants to stay on that. Looks a little awkward to not spread out. And 3-2 now. We like the... Oh, never mind. Yeah, 3-2. We really like the 6-4 switch here. But he just plays into the 5 instead with the weak board. Interesting. I would have thought 7-5 and five there. Uh, what are we just going to play to the ace? Maximum safety. You keep the 6-5 and five together there. Takes 2 off. Aces are going to get awkward. 6-1. Risk shots. We'll see if... Uh, then Yek enters and runs around. 6-3. Okay. So Wilcox not afraid of shots from the rear there anymore. And coast into another two points. 10 away, 5 away most likely.
Both playing really solid backgammon so far. Ardo's bringing clothes to his Denyak? A sweatshirt? Yeah, I can imagine it could be pretty chilly in there. It's been warming up in the playroom now with a lot of bodies in here. I remember the first two days were kind of freezing in the room here. So I was hot outside. It's uh, a weird transition to go back and forth between that. Still, I think, adjusting our aggression on the cube for Will. Maybe not as much as he has been, but I expect to see some prioritization of not losing his market. 5-2 is going to disconnect the split, even with uh, one spare less on the 6. Okay, not as clear, but uh, hitting split, fine. Deuce is going to cover the 11, so nice stop for, start for his Denyak, it looks like. Sending three checkers back. 3 is going to anchor and hit on the 7. Four three hits from the bar, but it could anchor. Against only seven in the zone, I think we just send the seventh back and play only a six, but uh, this is a nice option when you're leading in the score to just simplify the game, so understand that fine. Very close and fine play. And Wilcox happy to leave that blot in the bar in front. If he wasn't going to hit it last time, why is he going to hit it now that he's got an anchor? Five ace, no good ace. I think he... Oh, we can just slot instead. Very interesting. This feels like the natural thing. Oh, you can clean up and only leave one blot outside, too. Both the top plays are pretty strange looking. This is too many fly shots. So that must be part of why we can just uh, volunteer the slot, as we're not really reducing shots by avoiding it anyway. Four three, this time we'll hit from the bar. We get to keep our anchor. Double ones is going to hit. Switch to the seven, I think. Oh, it's going to hit two blots. That part's first for sure. Then we switch to the seven. Correct order and everything. And four checkers back with the better board. Not really much racingly. We got to think about it. Doesn't even pause to think, really. Yeah, jump on there. We got Ryan Rebello here. Is this good news or bad news? You wouldn't be here if you didn't win, would you? Uh, I won my first last chance. Nice. Well done, dude. I couldn't tell. I saw you talking to Mochi over there. Yeah, Mochi's not happy with my play. Oh, you, he doesn't like some play you made? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is going to hit for sure, and then it can come around with another one or make the seven. Make the bar look Uh The bar interacts nicely with the made 24, yeah, but we're really stiff and out of time with three checkers back, so not completely clear. Worth a little bit of clock time to think about. I think it's probably going to be the bar. It's too strong to prime, and the checker's on a 24 point. Yeah. Is this thing on? Uh, I think it is. I don't hear you on the speakers, though. Yeah, that's that's the on position. Oh, yeah, talking to both of them. What about this one? That's yep, I can hear you on that one, yeah. And decides to come around instead. I didn't see which was correct Neither there. Neither did I. They have been playing so fast. <laughs> I don't think the transcriber has time to keep up and, uh, and hit hint too often. Uh, just immediately comes out to the bar. Okay, doesn't need his anchor. Got it. Easy peasy for him. It's got to be the five point, yeah. Yeah, it looks like it. What else is there? There's a there's, there's, double there's hit, some something double like hits. this, but four is kind of nicely duplicated with anchoring numbers, but we just need a piece of structure so badly here. So it's stacked up. I like that play a lot. <laughs> I think I was... Uh, Streaming on the Facebook page, like the match updates, and I thought I saw you at like two to two at like a really low score line, and then all of a sudden you seem done and talking to Mochi. Did you play like an eight cube? To yeah, win or something? I sent him an eight cube. Oh, nice. It was apparently a very small no eight cube, and Mochi was serious. Yeah, I, sorry, what? It was like a it was like a forty no eight cube. Yeah. And Mochi was, was screaming at me for doing it. <laughs> Doesn't like you putting the life on the line for eight, right? Yeah. If you might be outclassing someone. That's a logical adjustment. I've never been one to adjust either and just try to play what I think is right. But um, very interesting. This got to be a hitter right now. Come in and hit seems very reasonable. Looks like an enter and hit, but with uh, trying to maintain the score leads, Zenyak's been a little more conservative in this game, but uh, does go for it here with the anchor. 3-2, going to hit somehow. 
Sure. That's a decent roll. Comes in and hits. I would hit on the four point. Apparently a small mistake. He wants you to break the eight point. Yeah, it feels pretty instead. strange to break the 11 to hit, but I guess you're not giving directs. No directs. It forces him to break the midpoint anyway, and it's stripped anyway, so you're going to have to break it soon. Yeah, good points, good points. And the players are completely borderline. Either hitting there, hitting on the four point. One five can't hit. Probably just going to come out to the outfield for mobility. Two three is going to hit and probably just come. Oh, he hit twice. There you go. Yeah, why not take yeah, that not? tempo away? Ren Sempkin anchors. Nice shot from Will to enter both. And Zdeniak under some pressure to continue the attack. He can make the deuce here. Is that yeah, the best he's got? I, I think that's what he's got. I mean, you, you you could cover and step up. The problem is you don't really want to step up because you're getting primed by a 10 point. You, re you really like jumping out with the sixes there. Yeah. Leaves a lot of blots around, so maybe it's uh, a little cleaner to cover from the nine, but just don't want to let my opponent roll and make, make anchors. This is a good like shot. That. I would have played 10 9 too, but apparently just making the 12. Extra really likes his 12 point for some reason. 10 9 interacts with the blot on the 22. Now that looks kind of nice. Yeah, this is what I would do. Yeah. And play B is the 6 to 5. I'm not really sure why we would do this instead. Because you're still priming the, the 6s on the 21 point. That's what yeah, it must have that's something to do with 6s from the bar, huh? Well, 6s on the bar just jumps out with 22. 3 2. Three, that's a two? Decent yeah. shot, actually. Make another anchor and continue hitting. And this is getting with many checkers back. I mean, Wilcox still has a huge problem with the third checker on the 24, all this, fans. Um, but five checkers back is not the kind of game that Zdeniak wants to play with the lead. Uh, but position looking really nice. Nine to nine's going to cover and four out, right? Yeah, seems reasonable. Seems like uh, they've been playing so fast that I expect that play to be done before I can get it out of my mouth. But uh, okay, gives us a little time on this one. And a fan. Okay, things looking really good in this game for Zdeniak. I don't think he's anywhere with the cube with how much work no, he's got to do, he's especially at the score. Four yeah, and so we're actually kind of close to a in, money pass, but... Uh, I have the score, it's nothing to think about, really. Right. Nice roll for Still Wilcox there. About. Makes a bid for the 22. Six threes. Probably got a hit and find a good six. Maybe just come out. So too, but we're just looking for mobility. Yeah, so why not 22 to 16? Crashing seems like the big risk here. Um, maybe he'll have trouble finding it because he wants to keep an anchor at the score and not risk gammons. No, he'll find but it But it easily. just looks uh, He's good at too strong. Plays. Yeah. Trying to fade a three for a huge advantage in this game. He does not. And Wilcox hits it and plays the two up. Yeah, that's a great Very roll. nice shot. Oh, he's supposed to hit twice, actually. Better. I would never have done that's that. That's super close, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's hard. All right, so four is probably going to anchor up and find an ace. I guess you could play 17 to 16 because coming up twice doesn't make any sense. Neither does playing eight to seven. Yeah, we just step into sixes hitting and escaping the 24 point. I like the switch as well. Same theme as before where stepping up 22 to 21 doesn't seem to help us escape at all. Six one's Six a nice one's shot. Six going to hit from the back anyway. Yeah, great shot from Will. They're both rolling well. 2-5 looks like it can link up in the outfield. Yeah, it's got to come out. This is an interesting game, actually. It's like Zdenyuk a, a semi-prime versus prime semi-back game. It's pretty cool. Yeah, this is a really interesting one. So that's going to come out twice, probably like that, sure. All the way to the 14. Everything else is doing good work already, and this blocks those two outfield points. So now we're in this awkward mutual holding game. Wow, it's a bad roll. What are you supposed to do with this? Or a holding game, I'll call it. I don't know what to call it. I think you got to come off of 21. I haven't seen the XG feed yet. And yeah, 21's clear, actually. There's just nothing better to do. You, you, you cannot break your 17 point or your 16 point. Usually those points don't do much, but here they're working very hard. Yeah, this is a really tricky play. Yeah, tricky position in easy. den general. It just doesn't look that much but like he, backgammon. He, he's going to find it because he realizes that that is too valuable. It's very hard for me to think about breaking the 21, especially since where it lands is on the 14, where it's it jumps into a triple shot, not to mention that we might just be pointed on behind. Um, I might use that to trick me into leaving the 16 or 17. Uh, this is a blunder, Zdenyuk. 
This is a surprising blunder, though, because it seems like they all should be pretty comparable. And it's hard to see why giving up the 21 is so good. Maybe if we add more of a racing lead, well, the mobility would make because more sense. Well, it's because you're 17 points, 60 points, too valuable. You see, if you break one of these points, you're just gonna, he's gonna either going to hit, he's going to hit twice, and he's going to prime you on on, uh, on your anchor, and you don't have much to do. I actually like the 17 better because then we still have the, the 23 point might hit with sixes from the bar. Um, but it's hard for me to see how we're going to get like uh, lose to an outfield mistake. prime and i'm more worried about being attacked when i give up my anchor boxes um, does sixes we're so happy we made this play yeah of course I think. but i guess do... it cleans up all the blots for will so uh, he's doing yeah, pretty yeah, well and now we have this 17 versus uh now he's, now he's getting close to a double actually yeah but it should still be easily takeable because yeah, it's, it's easy an easy play thing. here and i think he really wants to keep the 17 over the 16 for contact i think here. this probably has to be a cube right now at the score. Maybe not for money, but at the score, it's got to be pretty pretty easy to send it for a will. Maybe. You like to adjust those cubes when there's a lot of gammons in play, and it's not yeah, clear there, that's there the are, case here. And will's just going to cruise right by it. Fair enough. Not too surprising. How bad is it not to cube that? I'm interested. I don't know. We didn't get to see it. Um, this looks like we're hitting in the outfield. Yeah, hit, And I would have thought in. continuing to the five. That's maybe. the play. It's Actually, two point. down looks a lot better than me. No, it doesn't. It leaves more returns, and he can't get hit back. That leaves too many more shots. Okay, it's just the stack looks really awkward. Yeah, but what are you going to do? Uh, we can play 14 to 10. That doesn't look too bad to me. Oh, they're really close. They're basically tied. Okay. I think the idea here is to play safe and then cube them next time. It's often the idea when the cube's could in be. the center. Now that there's four checkers back, I can definitely see the gammon threat too. And I I think Will would send a cube two, like four, that. 2-4, he's got to come off. Uh, I'll see he if he can't... finds this play now. He doesn't have enough room to make two anchors, does he? Yeah, he, no, he's, he's got to come off the 21. This is a bad play. Because, Five to one is very close. Now he's supposed to do next time. And that's going to hold and off the it, cube that, for that's one got, That's got to be a cube because he has a bot on the ace point now. I'd be very surprised if that wasn't a double from Will. Probably. I think this is just playing quiet and safe. Again, the same thing. You want to cube him next time, so might as well just limit the volatility. His six stack looks ugly, but what else is he supposed to do? Three one, he's got to come there and like that, sure. That seems like the next point to go. And he's going to roll again. And maybe he has enough timing to float a two four for now with no priming potential in front. Okay, 12 6 5 3 looks simple. Scary to volunteer shots against Zenyak's four point board, but what else is there? 6-2, just going to go for freedom with those two checkers, sure. I mean, this, this this is a pretty simple cube right now because uh, Black's going to struggle to have a back game here and uh, White's threatening to make his three-point. And I'm not, yeah. I'm not so sure he can take this, to be honest. It feels like a take to me because it's wow, not gonna so roll clear. Wow, right I don't. I can't believe that. This can just play like an anchor game with either of them. So a lot of this is more common. You see the case in 2-5 uh, back games. But in this 2-4, I don't think Zenyak's too sad to leave either one of those anchors, whichever makes sense when he runs out of timing. He's still got a very strong holding game on both sides. I'm um, getting a little weaker now that, that uh, Will's filling in points, but he's pretty okay here. Now what he's supposed to do, come down and in, I guess? And I now, think now, now, now you see the XG the feed. He's, he's definitely missed some cubes because this is just an obvious pass right now. Yeah, this is looking a lot easier to clear for Will. And Black has no timing for a back game, really. And still very close. Well, he has some timing. He, he could sort of yeah. abandon the 23 point and become a holding game, but he yeah, doesn't exactly. really want to do that. He has a blot in the ace point, and he's leading 12-7, so that, that all those things put together make it a pass. I wouldn't be surprised to see Zdeniak choose to play this out, but we'll see. Um, we'll see if uh, Will even decides to send the cube. Look how tight that doubling window is. It's uh, barely even a mistake to send it and barely even a mistake to pass still. Well, it's sizable either way, really. Mostly because nothing's going to change on the next sequence. You're going to have about the same e equity either way. But if 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 he... I mean, this is... Okay, there we go. Good job. And putting ZZ in the spot. ZZ is probably going to find a pass. He knows what to do in these... Oh, he takes it. He snap takes it. Likes what what, he, what he did solution. there is he probably trusted Will that Will wasn't making the right cube decisions, even though he wasn't. And then when he saw he finally double, he said, "Okay, now now it must be time to take because the other ones that were uh, no double." I Surprised guess. he doesn't instantly hit the the fly shot in the outfield. 
It's going to wait a little bit. Making the ace tactically seems nice in case we get another shot. So we'll probably trick them a bit there. They might just, just both be evaluating the same way that uh, Zdenyek's contact is strong and that there's not that much adjustment to be made at the score. Uh, this just comes into the six, I think, yeah. And here we are with what we talked about. If he rolls double fives, it's really it's still looking like a pretty decent game to just play a 23 anchor game now. Nice roll. So not the end of the world. Okay. Will's going to fix that, though. Double threes looking beautiful. Get a spare on the three as well before he clears the six. Will's back and in the game. 12-9 is a lot easier to win than 12-7. Cruising home to a game win for sure. Probably not many gammons. No. Uh, he needs, uh, he, interesting he needs he at least choose a couple the cover sets. for wins there. Right now, it's probably not worth it to... Oh, you can play like that and take the three off, sure. That's the wrong position. There you go. Uh, he took a yeah, yeah, he, four he, he, off he, he played, played it four properly. days, so that was illegal. No, no, it wasn't. Wasn't it? Oh, no, no. They got it right? Okay, okay. All right, 6-1 covers. I think they did agree to legal moves, so the transcriber will stop them if they make a mistake. He's probably got a... Okay, he's got three, a yeah, we... Yeah, you got to go. That's a tough one to find, though, it, because it is, we're going to get a pointed on a lot. to realize like that you, you don't have anything else to play inside your board. You just got to go. Well, we can play inside our board without crashing. Yeah, but then you're going to run out next time it. anyway. Yeah, we might crack next roll is a big issue. One six is going to save all the gammons just playing 14 to eight. Don't have to leave and still can save Any the shots? contact for now. Six, four Double is actually a shot. closes it. Didn't right? roll it. Oh, look at that. It doesn't because it leaves us no so awkward in distribution. Very interesting. Hard to pass this up is a, that This is a blunder, actually. You should, you should realize he has no gammons here, so he should just play to win this game, and the best play to do that is just to clear to six point. The distribution does look pretty nice after clearing the six. That's uh, still a tricky one to find. But yeah, it's a hard play to find, and, and but Will is going to put it back, and he's going to realize it, I think. So, Glad he's spending some time to think about it. Um, he has 20 minutes left? Yeah, they've been playing lightning fast, dude. Wow. I think yesterday was the slowest match I've ever taken over the board, and it actually paid off. Oh, you played slower way. than usual. You were looking at a lot of plays, which I think is an improvement. Okay, here we go. We're starting to look at other alternatives, like switching here. Um, hasn't considered... Leaving the ace point open is actually a very difficult thing to do, I think. It just turns out it buys so much time and all the numbers play fine. If he looks at the play, I think he'll he'll choose it. But he just might not be crossing his mind that no, leaving I, the I, I don't, I don't think he realizes it. Yeah, it's this happens over the board. You just you just you focus. You're too focused on one thing. You don't realize something else that can can be better, right? Well, it's a really unusual thing to do that as well to pre clear the six. Oh yeah, pick it's not normal when you have the chance to uh, close but at, the at ace. least at least he found a better play than uh, yeah. than making the ace. It's a good improvement that he found too. Double, Double threes, threes gonna okay, still right going to clear fantastically. All right, five two. No entry for his Denyak, and if he stays on the bar long enough, there can be a few gammons here, but still pretty unlikely, especially the way that Will is clearing. Likely to get to nine points, eight away, five away. A huge improvement over the fifteen away, five away that he was at not long ago. 4-1 in. There's some gammons here, I suppose. Especially if it keeps Especially going 2-1. Two two he, needs, he, needs he needs a big set. Lots of checkers on the deuce still, so fairly unlikely. Just has to roll I think normal. He, what is it? He needs two Look how fast they're playing, just like... Oh, when, there's one. Okay. ...when they can. Okay. Four checkers left, so still two rolls away, so Zenyak should no, still be a big five. favorite so to need, save he it. He needs double threes or higher. No, double twos or higher. 5-2. Alright, 12-9. They're probably going to take a break. Is Danette playing lights out with the cube? 
which is uh, nice to see. Five three makes a point, okay. Five four can split. Three one, nice shot. Points on head, nice advantage for Zdenyuk. And the cube's gonna slow down a little bit at eight oh eight five boy. He's Four, gained six, enough advantage out. that he can't be sending too early. I think covering and splitting makes yeah, a lot of sense. Yeah, it makes here, more yeah. sense than just Good running five. all the way. With the board advantage, he doesn't mind contact. Clearly in the lead Four here. 4-2 makes the 11, probably. Links up and makes the 11 quickly. Just play too. safe. That's a good play. Four and one now he's going to hit the safe one. Because, yeah, this, you, have, you have one play, really, in a 13-8. It's nice for distribution. We get another checker involved in the attack. You the might hit kills our last He might there. overthink it and play 13-9-6-5. Yeah. But it's just too much. And... I mean, you're, you're, you're leaving the 6-2-5-3, which is super jokers that swings the game. And the problem with that play is, is uh, you're going to have to make, you're going to have to break your 8 point to make the inner board point anyway. So might as well just stack it up on the 8 and then not have to break it on your roll of 4-2. I guess play, I don't see a lot of... He's, he's going for a tempo gain here. Yeah, but we're not really preventing all that much from Will's but you, rolls. Yeah, you only have 9 in the zone and, and you don't even have a direct cover for that, for that blot on the ace mm -hmm. point. It doesn't make sense. Two six. Two six. Nice shot for he's, he's gonna get punished a little bit for that play. Uh, lots of hits from the bar, though. That's one. Here's one. And so Zdenyuk's still doing well in this game. Yeah, she probably he does seem to, to favor the tempo. Uh, switches to the seven. Pretty nice. I, I think. Oh no, it can make a board point. Okay. Look at you. <laughs> you just find all these instantly, right? How are we supposed to look for plays? Cube. Now he's on the front foot. You think this is a cube already? Hundred percent. He's outboarded. He's slightly ahead in the race, has a lot of work to do to get past that structure. Doesn't look like enough for money, but can we adjust a little bit? Is it it's, close? It's, it's got to be a cube. The, the blot on the ace point is really hindering his position right now. The blot on the ace is a problem, but his structure still looks pretty nice. I mean, you might... Yeah. Here. Yeah, it must be like borderline for money. We've got market loss in making the five it's, or it's, escaping, anchoring all these things. He's going to find this double. He doesn't miss these. It's just, it's just a common blitz scenario. Yeah, if things can go yeah. right, yeah. And honestly, ZZ is a much harder, uh, much harder decision right now. I think he tends to take though. I mean, he sees the play in this position. I think uh, yeah, I saw that enough. with Benjamin as well. Stack on the five. A lot of optimists out there on the take side of the queue, right? Snaps it up pretty quickly. Well played by both. We'll see how wow, Ooh, double threes is a killer. That could be maybe the first match lead for Wilcox. Yeah, looks like it. Probably a huge favorite to win a gammon now here. That threes was big. Double fours, you ouch. Switch. You got to switch right now. It's it's a it very can... obvious play once you see it. No, 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 it no. It can no. hit loose on the ace, too. That's not too bad. Uh, okay, misses the play. switch. And he's going to punish for it. Good. Gets hit. Okay, four, three. Probably just comes... Yeah, it just mobility, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I, I can't decide between the two of these. Well, those are really close. I guess he's worried about the counterplay, but I would have thought that I just I don't want to have any root num like bad cracking numbers. In both plays. So I'm just merits. happy to come out to the 18 for mobility here while my opponent is five primed. Oh, too bad. And gets a fan. Five one's got a hit, of course. An ace probably just. Does it have to oh, hit? Oh, it course? doesn't have to hit. Wow. Yeah, look he's at this. got him primed now, and he has a lot of work to bring those checkers around. So, um, not sure it's so easy to blitz. Look at that. that Sixes, wasn't even right I to think, hit. are going to play. Even with all the gammon threats, it's, you still don't want to hit. They almost play themselves. And then well, down they, to the yeah, bar. They do play themselves. Oh, he's supposed to play 13 to 1 for some reason? What, what? is this? What? This, this transcriber has it wrong. Oh, uh, he, co he covered with 1. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he did cover with 1. Okay. So, the normal play. Bans and unable to close. Five six can almost come out from the back. Yeah, but it, maybe you got to come out and come in. Does it still display to the three? That looks kind of awkward. Yeah, but what other else play to do? B is just uh, eighteen, 18 to, to seven, seven, which is yeah. a blunder because now you now you're stuck back there. Finds it. 
no entry. Still looking for five four one combos to close. Double, Double ones is. doesn't do it. Ooh, this is an ugly number. I mean, one, you two, can survive three, four, it, but sure. near cracking with that almost. Next ace is okay, and then the one after it's a problem. Two, two six, six gets a nice checker shot. moving. Great shot. And Zenyak still can't enter one checker. Five four, yeah, I like this uh, another builder and then just advance. Looks yeah, like we no got a lot of that flexibility with this. Sixes leaves the shop though. Don't Didn't roll a six or five that. when you make your point. Nope. How about wow? How about that? Both of them. Six to ace. Yeah, don't need to slot. You just don't need to slot. It just Not gives ideal, them counter though. play for no reason. And if we have to play home against a Phantom Deuce point game, that's a little bit of hope for Zenyak. Now I think you're supposed to hit him here. Double ace. Double ace cleans up and in. Good distribution for him. Six three playing safe still, but uh, spares not distributed so nicely for Will. Still just needs to play safely to win a gammon. Four one is gonna clear from the front because of the spare distribution. Five three can't enter. Fading is six two now. Nice Double roll. ones is gonna greatly improve. It probably things. just switches yeah, to the four switch. point. Yeah. yeah. Close the gap. Stays even on the outside. 2-1. Takes two off, I guess. Two off, okay. And that's two it. in, that's basically going to lock yeah, up the Yeah, he might, might as well resign. Unless he wants the PR point and staying back. Uh, oh yeah, you can get PR points for that, huh? <laughs> yeah. The PR side bet they have? Yeah, look at that, it's going on. <laughs> <laughs> now don't make a mistake here, and okay. I, I, know, I, I know I've done that once on Galaxy. <laughs> you're staying, you, and, then, and then you don't run when you're supposed to, it's like a 400 blunder. It's hilarious. And yeah, first match lead for Wilcox at uh, four away, five away. Uh, a scoreline where with the lead, he can still send the cube reasonably as well. Are they taking a small break here? I yeah, see they should be. Sending the checkers out, so maybe not. We got the camera switched over to us, though. Nope, nope, they're playing oh, wow, straight okay. through. Fair enough. Man, I, they must have something to beat to after this. I'm convinced. Maybe ZZ's just in the zone. Both seem very in the zone. Yeah, they're sure. They've played enough backgammon this weekend, they don't have to think anymore. Finds a split. Uh, the most normal cubes for Will are probably going to be gammonish positions because of in increased gammon value on a 4 cube. Nice Zenyak shot. mostly just sending the cube I don't normal know if that, you're probably sending it. Uh, is that enough with no mobility? No, it's obviously not enough. Yeah, still looking pretty strong. Pick em game. 6-5, five. Five, that's six a bad shot. Awkward. You probably got to come in and hit, yeah. Yeah, just go for the go attack. For the Why not? We've got a blitzing position. Our opponent's got a priming position. Let's try it out. Ahead in the race. Lots of things to incent breaking a point to attack here. Probably deciding between which attack. Do we want to keep the eight point even though it doesn't communicate with the deuce? I don't know. You, you might be thinking about 13 or 2 here playing for a race lead, but it's not the right idea. That could be as well. Playing safe, it looks like there's a lot of numbers to improve Will's position. And if he's the type to go through those, yeah, okay. I think he'll see that. Nice play. And a fan here is interesting. Nice tempo, yeah. There aren't really that many strong entries from Will, I don't think. I, I mean, hitting, of course, but what does he do if he can't? How about dancing? Double twos is a fan, and this looks pretty Three, four, strong. Five, six, seven, I think. Eight, nine, ten. I think he got to cube this. I buy that. And it's it looks probably a take. For Will. You, you have it a looks decent like there's structure a lot of wins in this guys game, there. yeah. And our opponent's pretty gappy. With the five-point open still, we can just enter an anchor or something like this. And it's going to require e some Even, even coming on the close. ace is strong here. Yeah. Let's say Zenyak rolls something like a 4-1, covers, and does something else. He rolls like a 1-5, he still has a great game. Yeah. I'm with you. And it's actually, it's actually got, it became a smaller take on plus plus, but... Uh, yeah, I'm surprised how much that changed, actually. Me too. Because if it will, it's a ton of recube big... Turn it to four to play for the match. 
I yeah. guess. I Still guess. an elevated take point for Zdenyak. Uh, obvi- obviously, Zdenyak. if ZZ was four away, we'll be passing this like a rock. But he's not. He's five away, so he still has a game left even after getting Gammon. So, I don't know. I, I think it's fine to take here, most likely. I mean, if, if his nine point wasn't made, if he had like a, I don't know, uh, instead of two checkers on the nine, he had one in the eight and one in the nine in, in like a more normal position like that, it, it had to be a pass. But because he has a nice four prime, you could just win by priming. And ZZ might not even cover most of, uh, a lot of the time. Let's say he rolls something like, I don't know, 6 1. What are you supposed to do with that? Maybe just come make the Probably 7. Hit. Oh, he passed. He's going to let it go. Yeah, yeah I think if he saw the evaluation, I don't think he'll be too disappointed in that. Those no, are tough no, ones no. to evaluate when they're close. Lots of gammons. You, lots you, of you, you don't, you don't want to take a gammonish cube that might, that might get your opponent to Crawford. That makes sense. It's hard to see exactly how much work Zdenyuk has to escape that four prime, too. Those outfield primes, I think, tend to be weaker than they intuitively look. See if you find four away. Five. Four away is a fun score line for cubes. Yeah, this is good. I hope we get into some gammonish positions. Four three, you got a hit and split. He knows this one, of course. Could be the game to decide the match, especially with a start like this. Five one's got one hit in and hit. Sure. Oh, uh, maybe not. Maybe they're both just gonna anchor. Okay. Four enters and Salt doesn't hit loose. Okay, comes into a double shot instead of just tempoing. Interesting. Yeah, you don't want to play eight though. to two. It doesn't make sense. Double threes is going to anchor two, and we're right. playing a mutual holding game. Boring holding uh, game. I would I would have made back? the three point with the uh, with the nine like this, but apparently eight five three is actually both the plays are completely yeah. Even. Three one okay covers probably just step up to be honest. The race is down, so I, maybe contact is nice. Maybe yeah, but you, you don't want to you don't want to come down and let your opponent hit you and escape like that. It's, it's yeah, that's it's true. Too much. Escapes with tempo also has the better board currently. Five two. I think he probably just got to play two down, but running's in a, a reason. No, it's not. Fair the enough. six is also yeah, an option, really but uh, yes. We strip the midpoint, but create some builders in our I mean, out of direct may, may, Maybe he gets fooled here and thinks that running's okay because he's way ahead, but the problem is it's, it gives too much counterplay for ZZ to just hit and then hope to make the, his own five point. Yeah, with an anchor, it's not too scary to hit loose. 6-2 just runs. Okay. Wrong time this that. might be a better play than that, and there is. I, I must say the play looks a little bit weird running when you're down in the race, but he, he played it too quickly. He didn't think of alternatives. Yeah, we're going to need a board to uh, turn this game around at some point, so we could have worked on that right away. This, this play is very reasonable. They don't blame him for this one at all. This is, uh, two downs, uh, a nice play. It forces him to uh, to hit with the anchor, and you have tons of returns. That's We start to see all those play-in checkers in front when uh, there's a big race discrepancy. Yeah. So Will can but survive is, a hit and wants to make pips. some decisive action towards clearing contact. Uh, well, ZZ and doesn't have a board. Again. Interesting. And that's why ZZ needs to have a board right now so quickly, too. I, I would have found the 6-1 to one here. But yeah, it looks uh, even less intuitive to slot now. That's hard. That's a hard play. So he's going to find... Pick between the safe the, plays. The problem is team. it's a reward play, right? Uh, 13-9 to nine is viable. For the same reason, it looks a little... Not quite like what we want to do, but 6-2 to two is just so deep that it's a fine alternative, okay? Yeah, I don't want to play 6-2. I would play like this. Tough to escape with tempo with the blot on the ace as well. Okay, three twos. Probably just going. He's, he's probably got a slot again. Now he's going to find it. Yeah, finally gets to because cover. It, now it's easier than just unstacking your six point, which looks dreadful. Okay, three two. Probably just going to play six three. This is actually an interesting holding game, to be honest. Because now what he's supposed to do. Eight to two, yeah. What else? Has to repeat the shot, yeah. Not sure how often he gets to hit it. Four, this slot's a nice point. Pretty productive roll for his Denyek. Five, four, still refuses to cover. Well, he can cover his two point. Leave it at one's duplicated, which is the best play. And duplicates aces without them and think about it nice too much. Shot. Four is going to cover in which ace, yeah. Probably 13 to 12. You don't want to break your anchor here. Yeah. Keep an asset. They're close, but... And the best thing is, if he if he fans, he might think about doubling, which is great. Yeah, having one on the roof looks pretty scary at this nope, score line. No, nope. he said he oh, returns perfect with the Oh, he's going to hit instead. I, the first yeah, thing I thought was cover, but okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four-point board there. 
Very loose and lots of gammons here. Uh, not 12, on that roll. Twelve nine, I guess. You don't want to make another blot. We want to step into a double shot. Hmm. What else are you supposed to do? Six three is no good. Coming out's no good. Yeah, adding another blot. Six three to avoid the double shot seems logical. I mean, it's only it's surprised. only threes and ones. Here's it's seven and fours, which is almost which is almost the uh, same number of shots anyway. Fours and ones. There's definitely fewer, but fours, um, one, fours are reasonably duplicated too. They make the twenty point currently, so at least you get that upside of it. I that's think an, that's, that's probably a wonder, actually. Wow. Big piece of the clarity of the play. Yeah. Okay, three one. Now three you want to hit again? Hits? I think. I think. Because you, you don't have a proper ace. Time. Well, you don't have a proper ace after you cover anyway. You can't leave that many shots. Wow, Ooh, nice great shot. shot from ZZ. And of course, he's going to come around and hit on the five point. He's gonna it looks this, like, like it, but he's bad. outboarded, so he's going to pause to think. No, I no, suppose no, something no, like no switching to the play. ace buys some time. Switching to the ace is it just a dreadful play? <laughs> it's what? <laughs> it's a dreadful play. <laughs> <laughs> Only a three point board, and our opponent still has us outboarded. And now it might be too good way too time. easily. If he dances here, you could just play on too good and hope to win our undoubled gammon. B hits. It comes in the anchor. Okay. Mm. Now is interesting. Because it's, it, I don't think this is takeable. The question is whether it's too good or not. Still a lot of work. I, th to I do. think it's, it's, just, I think it's probably just a good. double pass. I would think. What do you think the money action is? Insta pass. Okay. Wow! It's look at that. It's my. Good. It's Sorry. miles okay. too good. That's a symptom of four away, four away. That's for hard. Sure. Understandable mistake there. Two five split. Okay, six two just runs all the way. No, you can do this to score, sure. It makes more sense. Will back to slightly behind. Nice shot. It's probably just gonna make the two points. I don't know about running slightly better. I would have just made the two points, but what are you supposed to do? Interesting. Yeah, we can turn it into a blitz, but uh especially if the score just going for freedom and racing lead makes the most thematic sense to me. But ZZ knows this one. Interesting. Yeah, both plays are tied. Let's see what he goes with. Just running doesn't win enough more. That's really interesting. So for money, this is clear to continue to the ace. Yeah, because it wins all the gammons. Yeah. Here, here running's running is okay because you don't you don't care about winning a gammon that much. But playing two on the roof is just best by far. For money, I mean. Yeah, these borderline decisions are where you're going to spend your time because both plays have merit. You just don't know which one's better. Yeah, they still, despite the the pace of play, they've been slowing down for the important stuff. The thing is to realize ones that, that would give me problems, maybe, but still, yeah. It's like they have a different gear for playing the the no-brainer plays, though. Maybe they're both worried about saving time for the difficult decisions and just trying to rush through the plays that they know that they're going to do and save clock time. It's interesting. Found the best one. Nice job. And yeah. if Will fans here, he probably has a double, which is amazing. At three-way or four-way, that's a tough find. I would never... Be thinking okay, about it. Okay, he enters at one. Now he's just not gonna. He's just gonna roll on. It is a score that you can consider passing at as the trailer, since he gets a very nice four-way, two-way, but um, still quite scary like, to send. P to. PRs are like completely tied right now. Yeah, really strong play from both. Ways off a of cube. Seeing the equities here, you can see that if he fan with if he fan with both, it would have been a double and probably just a fake. Maybe it's a, I wouldn't say necessarily because of the reduced gammon price. Well, you, but you win so much more, too. Yeah. 5-4 is probably just going to hit and find a... Oh, you can just run all the way. Yeah, you, you could have hit, but you don't have a good 5, so you might as well just play for your racing lead. This is why that making like. the ace is so surprising, is that like playing a blitz at this scoreline is very difficult to do. It's very much nicer to just get to wins. This is a nice play here. You might have uh, been... Like, I, I was fooled at the start by just... Uh, yeah, forcing on the blitz, but it's not right because you don't have a good five afterwards. 
Look at this play it's supposed to find. If you find, I would have found a thirteen to eight like almost instantly. Even six to one is okay. But apparently, uh, coming down and creating four blobs in a, in a, against a blitzing position is better. It, it must win more, make a bit at like containing the checker at least. But yeah, that's a hard play to find. You. How many more gammons does it lose? Oh, not that many more. Okay, goes for the tempo. Tempo is reasonable. Another here. idea. Only a two-point board so far, too. So he's not like so threatened. There's just a lot of material in the zone, and a perfect shot's gonna win a lot of gammons, of course. Double three. Double three is perfect enough. I don't make, what think so. Probably make um, down with the last one. Six yeah, but to no, three. you don't That's an interesting shot. play. Yeah, it makes sense. You see, you make the five, but your best play, and you just slot the next one. I guess unstacking's nice when we have to give a direct six to play down. Nice We're leaving a direct anyway. Sure. Reduces shots. All very simple for the racing game plan. Okay. All right. What does he got? Six three mixed to five, probably. Not a bad roll, but maybe not enough either. And how about this cube action right now? Yeah, this is another one that I'd have trouble finding, but it, it makes some more sense this. Here. Actually, actually wants to pass this. Slightly too good. Yeah, yeah. And so it's uh, but I, 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 I would bet ZZ's rolling that he's not good enough, maybe. Yeah. Uh, this looks well, like it no, just no, covers. He, what he's doing is he's just trying to. He's hoping that the cube uh, margin is not big enough that he can make a mistake and just try to win an undouble gamma without making a blunder yeah. by sending a, I don't know, a too good or not, a not good enough double. And which, that is, does, which is a very reasonable way to play this cube actions at the score. That tends to be the case at these leading score lines so close to the end of the match. It's not going to be a big error to miss a cube almost ever. The problem is if Will rolls a two, he has a, he has a pretty good game going. Yes, that's for sure true. So otherwise, that's why X you wanted to send yeah. to send the Q, and it was just a big pass. Interesting plan B of attacking, but we can see that leaves quite a few good numbers. Uh, this just preserves all of your race lead. Best he can do is anchor on the deuce and still trailing in the game. So finds the best play there. Five, this is one, probably like going to cover. Sure. And, yeah, get rid of our liability on the ace. And Zdeniak with a ton of threat here. Now he is definitely too good, and he's going to think... So he must not have been clear that he could cash last time. Yeah, so I, that's what I was saying. Yeah. But he, he, should, he should just follow his mantra of just uh, not cubing at the score at all, really. It's the easiest thing to do, really. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> but here, I mean, you're ahead 35 pips. You have, what is that, 12 in the zone? It's, it's, it's just, oh, wow. And he's he's going to make another two-good double pass. Well, pass. Well, okay. That's the second straight game with a two-good double pass for ZZ. Those are hard ones. Are they? And we'll stand up break. for a moment. I don't know if it's a break. Yeah, he's probably gonna do a bit of yoga. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are they taking a small walk here? They're taking a drink of water. If they do, I can run around the room and see if I can find any score updates on the Facebook Live again. Um, I think Bill just dropped by. It's more fun to see it though. Alexandra in the spectator area back there. There we go. And yeah, I think we're on a quick break here, so I'm going to take a, a quick tour of the room, and we'll be back with two-way, four-way shortly for the conclusion of this match. Thanks so much for the help, Ryan. Come back if you want to. Yeah. Congratulations on your win.
Players working their way back towards the board. I didn't see a lot of active matches going on. I did a little tour to see what's going on and saw wins and losses. It looks like I think Sander and Benjamin are done playing or else they're on a long break. I don't know. Oh, they're micing them up, so maybe they're not done. Maybe I should go over there and double check that real quick before I get back on. Or they're doing an interview with Benjamin Lund, something like this. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think we're on the mic if we want to be, Ryan. But uh, what are they saying? Give me some name. I've seen R O B E L O. I've seen it with two L's. Robello. They just rebel with an O. <laughs> Barjet Sachs. I think Steve Sachs won that one. Just saw him over by the brackets. He wants to get on stream. We should go, uh, yeah, companion is Ryan Rebello, people asking. 
What's my daily job? Uh, teaching backgammon lessons, writing backgammon books, trying to make that it right now. We'll see. Before that, I was a manager for like a support team for computer software companies. But yeah, I'm seeing what I can do with just uh, the backgammon stuff for now. I like doing this a lot. So if I can focus on it, find a way to make that like viable for a living too, what I'll be doing. Last couple of months started teaching lessons and things like that. If you're interested in that, reach out. Yeah, Sax Mozad would be cool. Um, I presume we're going to do the undefeated finals on the A stream, but uh, maybe that'll make it to the B stream. We'll see. Should, there's always a lot of good pairings, but um, <laughs> let everyone know that we've got to vote for that for sure. Looking forward to my book. Thank you. Yeah, I have no idea how quickly we'll get that out, but I'm excited about it too. <laughs> no, my book is not on dice fixing. It'll be a fun to write. Someone already wrote that. I forget what it's called, but, uh, oh, what is the guy's name? One of the world champions, like, like decades ago, wrote this book about uh, mind control of dice. There actually is a book on this, right? <laughs> Mentalism? <laughs> I, I can't remember the guy's name either. One of my students, though, was telling me about it and how he met the guy, and the guy was telling him all about it and wrote a book, won a world championship. I don't know. Back in the days when backgammon was fun. <laughs> mm, backgammon still is fun. <laughs> of course it is, yeah. But you're right. Oh yeah, Alpha Backgammon, that's the name of it. You're What's right. the guy's name? I can't remember. Nowadays it's mostly XG. Everyone's right. Oh Vernon yeah. Vernon Ball is the guy's is, name. You gotta this, look that one up. Is this thing on? I think so. Up is on. So. It's it's on. It just yeah. I can't hear myself at through I gotcha. thing. It's resonating. Uh, I see. Yeah, you should be able to hear it on the speakers. I heard rumor that Steve Sachs got you, Simon. What? Yeah, you can jump on too. I think we got an extra microphone if you want. Oh, it's a crowd. The rebel and the barjet. He's too polite though. He's not going to say a word. And they're playing so fast. I'm still <laughs> still recovering. Recovering. You're out, mate. Uh, the other way is on. I, it, Perfect. Yeah. On? Yeah. Okay. You should be able to hear yourself on the speaker if you talk loud enough. But uh, also, Simon, are you uh, really officially funny. eliminated? Yeah, right in it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm okay with it. Yeah. What happened? Did he roll some dice and bear off all his checkers? It was and... actually a really interesting. It was a interesting yeah. match. I was down to. It could have been a good one. Seconds. Thirteen seconds. Thirty-seven. <laughs> oh, thirty-seven. Okay. Well, here we go. Ed. Two way, four ways. Denyek leading. Six five to open. Looking for simple games. Any advantage whatsoever, and Will Snellings is going to be sending the cube. This is probably enough. It's too in most cases. You make, you make the board points. Nice play, Will. Yeah, yeah. We got to play offense here for sure, but uh, Zdenyuk's going to have to do something to stay in the game. 6 5 is good enough. Well, how about that? Nothing now. Well, the yeah. relief when you roll the 6 5. Not stay in the game, but to avoid a cube. Two away four. Six, I think we're splitting for contact here, right? Wow, no, not even play. split, just two down. Very interesting. That's Better a, than that's running. That's a hard though. play to find. I want to make Good the same mistake. You don't want the, to the, six three, yeah, though. Yeah, that's many, the uh, many shotties. Okay. Let time and talk. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you think the returns from the roof are enough to send here? Uh, there's no, some volatility maybe. on it for sure. I'm not sure. It's reasonable. I probably not send this. How I many are there? I think Five, it's a little bit too early, but eight sixes. It can't be bad. Oh, yeah, and it is nice a sizable cube. double, too. Okay, nice, nice find by Will. 4-6 is going to hit from the roof, but which 6? 24-18. You don't want to make the bar point, I guess. Yeah, don't let him make an offensive point. Okay. The other one bids for s escaping for this. Uh, but hitting the bar point also keeps pressure on the other this, block. This one's okay. usually right, to be honest. Yeah, that's difficult. Then a fan. Oh, this is a oh, huge swing him. for Will. Wow, he's got him. With Big his great chances double. for a gammon for the match win. There it is. Is that a 1-5? 4-1. 4-1. Uh -huh. Double three fan fans. again. Wow, look at this. The comeback is real. You got to bring two five, down. Five four, yeah. I think or, we're. No, how about, how, that, that, that plays better. Oh, right, interesting. The likes. five in. Yeah, oh, yeah, because our sense. sixes we want to hit with. That's okay, right. makes more numbers work, I suppose. Gets us good aces. Attacks lower oh, points and, as well. And I think you're probably just... supposed to maybe hit. 
maybe Lilith well, I would hit, I would hit I would think be confident it was right and it's it's not right. the dupe. So, I don't know, I would never get this play. Look, you see? Every buys the tempo to, to avoid play. being pointed on. Yeah, reasonable. Wow. Six is a huge shot. Okay. And he's supposed to hit. Look at that. He's he supposed to hit on the two point. He, the, the, Ooh, to prevent the anchor. anchor. Yeah, that's wild. Well, and he gets uh, semi punished. But that's going uh, to save back a, still win a, a bunch of gammons. Of gammons. Though. He used to win. Yeah. Or three, I think. That's in, a bad play. Oh, goes a little further. Yeah, he can. Uh, did he see the wrong roll on there? Okay. He can. Is there any value in making the nine point? I'm not sure. I don't mind around to the 11. No, no. I don't think yeah. there's any value in the nine point here. It's point zero. He's gonna zero let the two. delay pass like the rules say for having played an illegal move. Uh, if I had made the nine point yesterday, I think I would have won my match. Fucking <laughs> 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 hell. Enters and slots. This is gonna save a lot of gammons. Huge roll. For uh, Zdeniak, would love to find freedom with that back checker. It saves, also trying he's to build save a lot of gammons, though. Also trying to build a, a board to uh, win when Double he gets Double fives, good okay, okay. Racing gammons are still very much alive. All the way up to 37%. That's quite a bit. I'd be inclined to slot the four, but this could be fine. Uh, slotting the bar with it is nice. Okay, yeah. Oh, waste some gammon saving pips. Maybe that's part of it. Better to build the outfield prime in a spot like this. Okay. Two in and then any AC like six to five looks good. Don't create an inner gap. So it was Wilcox against Sander if he wins this. Is that the final? Uh did Sander win already? I don't know I who's won so. that match. Sander is up sixteen five, Crawford. Okay, okay. So that's an update that everyone's looking for. Might be able to go nice catch roll. the end of this. Yeah, that, escaping that save a lot of yamans there. extra checker is pretty huge. Look, yes, it wasn't even in the top seven for some reason. Oh, no, he's close. just supposed to build the board. Wait, twenty three twelve wasn't even right there. No, but it would be like twenty or something. Twenty. Four one makes the outfield five prime. He's basically going to get not a bad shot on a running gammon. And Will is fresh out of five. He's to start playing behind. So I think. Uh, oh, he can think about clearing the point. I, I would have fa found that play. Let's just try to win a gammon. But apparently, you win more by just by just playing safe. Yeah, two off the six makes the most sense to me. You just pre-clear that point and don't and, and clear that out of And he's all up to 51% order. gammons. Because just yeah. of, of all the guys in the outfield. That's yeah. crazy. Well, he's going to leave a shot quite yeah, a lot he's, of the He's going to spend his time on this play. He's going to go over to numbers and realize that this play makes more sense. Fortunately, he saved all this bank for just this moment. 15 minutes he's to He's going to count crossovers and do all this. Now your fours are going to be stripping the four point, which isn't good. So you probably... Well, how will the fours play? It looks like Zenyak's definitely going to need to hit a shot to save the gammon here. Way too many crossovers to just race off, I think. But he's he's been really efficient about that outfield prime. Very nice find. Hmm. This is this is a hard play to be find to be fair. So what's the attraction of breaking the five point? I would have thought it takes another checker off and makes more gammons, but apparently that even that's wrong. Takes another checker off and it's a point you don't have to clear later as well. So I mean that can be reducing the contact some doesn't necessarily create more flexibility to have it. Of course, you'd like to clear the six first if you get the chance, but I mean, this comes up plenty. All his rolls play safe next roll for sure, right? So it's a zero position where he has to leave sixes and fives after the other play. So it's not super intuitive. I, I definitely see the merit of this. Well, let's say you roll six five. I don't know. This is one sequence of many and then you have two checkers on the six point and mm. then you roll the six one five one which you don't want so yeah those are shot levers Whereas later six, after one, we five, strip the six would just, yeah would just play six six to five yep well yeah that's the value of having the so five point it helps one, you clear the six for like, sure you yeah. don't want a gap maybe yeah are you saying your instinct simon is to clear the five or not no 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 for sure not to not. clear the five yeah uh, i like to just get the checkers off the six point. Yeah, yeah. It's obviously something to do with the, it being a 23 point game rather than a 24. If it, that could be as well. I don't, that I don't could really be as understand. well. He's going to make the other play. 
And goes with the other. Yeah, it's hard to decide between those. We we know they're both valid ideas in in certain cases. Hard to know when what's what. Fifty eight percent gamma is a terrible three one. You feel terrible being in Zdenek. Yeah, Zdenek's gonna feel sick, sort of especially when he sees those two good double cubes that he sent. And he's got to like he could, he could think about there. stupid plays like this. Like you don't want to think about stuff like this when you're losing. <laughs> Interesting that he's finding the best play there. I'm really not thinking no, at all not. about he's, racing. No, he's off. not finding the best play. He's play 8-7 for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, 8-7. Yeah, I have no idea what that is. I was thinking that must be 8-7, but 7-6. to six. Okay, four, takes two, the okay. Breaks the structure a little bit. Probably 4 off 3-1, I would think, this time. And, yeah, Will's going to be faced with plenty of don't, don't, decisions leave, leave here a zero now that he five. So what's wrong with taking just taking one off? Is well, you, you leave a, a, a shot at 6-5. Okay, yeah. Uh, I guess. I think yeah, Z, 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 Z realizes the save again he's got to hit a shot. So he's, he's just going to make a, a pure 5 prime in front yeah, of it and then just yeah. bring in checkers in. Yep. He's resigning. 4 1. That's actually not a good roll. He's going to play 6 1. Yeah. Yeah, it looks a little too strippy to take two off. Double 3 is going to save a lot. Yeah, he's three three he's down to the front forty eight point four. So he's a favorite to save it. Oh, he can just start playing in like this. I would have yeah, found yeah, I would have yeah, found something yeah, like this, but yeah, apparently this is me wrong. Too. Yeah, no, it's not so. I'm still thinking that he has way too many crossovers to save the gammon this way. So I would have just put checkers on the four and the three. But okay, he's he's trying to maximize crossovers and thinks he can do it natural. Um, he's given up a lot of his contact value though. Zizi is actually a favorite to save a gammon right now. Come on, this is not, it's not—it's not a fair way to lose to lose in this thing. Exactly, <laughs> it's so horrible. It's not fair. Yeah, totally. Double fours. Yeah, you see now. Now, you, now you've got two gaps instead of one. I mean, he's gonna leave a shot. What are you supposed to do? Uh, slot two points, I guess. Oh. No, once well, 10 to 6 seems in, too 10, nice, 6, 5, but I don't 4, think we can afford to break okay. the 7. Yeah, 5 to 4 seems like a key piece. It's tough, though. He's been maximizing crossovers the whole way through, yeah, and he's going to yeah, go with that yeah. again. Figure out how this to reconstruct his board later. This time. I guess he can still hit and save a gammon pretty easily six without one, the boards. Six one. How do you play this? That's the number. Off, I guess? Would you have had the 5 point? Uh, is it even more numbers to say there? Maybe not. Yeah, it is. For sure it is. Wow. One more. E. All the way around to the 11, and he is still saving a lot of gammons with this, but uh, favorite to lose one. 3-1. Three, one. Three, how one, how many checkers has he got on the 3.5? Yeah. Just, just five. What do you do now? No way. Well, we're still spending all the pips outside, so I think we just do this and stay one roll, but I'm not sure what the shot lever is one roll. I guess it's set. You gotta stay, too. Uh... Yeah, Oof. just build the board, I would think. Yeah, it doesn't look like we can get off without better than, like... Is it fives or better if we run? So it's I guess so we're staying. So nasty. You just have to... And remaking the board, okay. I would, I would have found this play. But apparently coming in... Oh, we in could take a better. crossover and get sixes yeah. to get off, though. Yeah, so I think right. you should play eight to six with one of them, yeah. It's a good spot. And misses that, okay. He needs a, he needs a, a double or a one. <laughs> then I'll leave a shot. Wow. Oh, six is to win the match. And there's your finalist in a super exciting match. I'm sure, Zdenyek's going to be disappointed Dude. having led so long. Totally Played really, look at this. Look Will at just PLs. always matches his opponent. Whatever his opponent plays, he plays exactly the same. Nice PRs there. And They're identical. What an exciting finish to that match. Tough to see either of them have to move to the undefeated uh, bracket, but excited for Will as well to be in those undefeated finals, and we'll see if that's going to be Sander Lyloff facing him or Benjamin Lund, but a uh, great match by both of them. Super good stuff. We're going to have uh, a doubles match between Chris Rogers and David, David Wells and Nevzat Dogan and Stephen Hammond at 530. Uh, no commentary on that, so you can listen to the players talk through their plays. That's coming up in an hour. And then the uh, undefeated finals will be here at 10 p.m. So uh, tune in for that. Thanks so much for watching. Check out the Galaxy app on the Apple Store. 
that Tempest clock in the store too, playing on that Monte Carlo Grand Prix board. Um, subscribe to everyone on their YouTube and everything like that too. Wow, what an exciting match that was. Everything we, we thought it would deliver and more. The speed gamut aspect was super fun. That was a tough one to keep up with. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in with us, too. We'll be back soon. If the Sander match is still going on, I'll get a little Facebook stream of that and see if we can catch the end of that, too. Thanks for helping me out, Simon and, uh, and Ryan. And bye, everybody. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, you're saying the video? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. What do I know? We got Will Snellings coming over here to talk to us about that win. Cool. You want to take a seat or stand with me? What do you want to do? You can grab the mic, whatever you like. Uh, here, we'll take, yeah, maybe I'll stand. I've been sitting a while. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Pick it up and uh, okay. make sure you speak directly into it. Okay. Then they'll be able to hear All you. Right. Like like close to it, too. Just All hold right. it on your mouth. Okay. <laughs> too. All right. Um, but here. yeah, congratulations on your win. That was a tough one. Started off Thank to uh, a big deficit there, you know, and had to claw your way back until that four-way, yeah. two-way game in the end. Yeah, I, I had that uh, last night with, with Hans Libby. I think I was stuck 8-1. So yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I've had a lot of experience either winning DMP or rallying. It's, yeah, that's yeah. That's been the, the mode so far. That's backgammon, though. It was a really exciting match. I mean, one thing that really stood out, not really like technically, but just both of you were playing at a really fast pace. I don't know where that came from in that match. Well, well, Stanek is one of the best speed players in the world. I, yeah. I mean, he might be the the best. So, yeah. So, and I don't really play speed, but if I like a play, I'm not going to stew over it. Yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, albeit, sometimes I should actually slow down. <laughs> I, I don't play super fast, but there are times where, I know I remembered a couple of plays, and I'm not going to go go back. They weren't even really significant plays. That yeah. I won't I won't mention them, but it, but I was aware at the time they kind of stick with you a little bit. Yeah. And then you have to just like say you know i'll see that later i'll see that later yeah but. yeah i think you mentioned that too when you're like playing well getting prs you like and winning matches you don't feel like you have to review your matches as much and it's when they go wrong that you have to kind of look through them so have you been like following up on the transcriptions or anything or just trying to relax and focus on playing your best the, the deeper i've gotten the less interested I, I am in seeing the matches and yeah it, well especially if it wasn't the most recent match yeah so it turned out that i played poorly against uh, Dave I forget Dave it starts with an H and I apologize to Dave for not remembering <laughs> his exact name Dave from Chicago is a super nice guy okay okay and uh, yeah that match I played a 5 you played like a 7-7 seven, seven or something and yeah know, I'm not pleased with that but I'm not going to go it's two, two or three matches ago I'm not going to look at it now yeah okay okay it's just yeah cool so uh, undefeated finals tonight what are you going to do to get ready for that match who am I? Who am I playing? Do we know? I think there's. I was gonna run over there and see, but I don't think they've finished yet. It's either Sander Lyloff or right. Benjamin Lund. That's right. That's you got right. any preference two, between two, those two? <laughs> two? Two slouches, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, yeah, I have a preference for, for being rested and and yeah, you know, seeing seeing what comes because I got gotcha. you. I mean, they're both strong and. Yeah, It'll be entertaining. Hopefully, be entertaining. Hopefully, yeah, it'll be close the whole way. Let's say. <laughs> cool, man. We'll see if there's any questions here. But I mean, you've been a fan favorite. Everyone wants to see all your matches. Thanks so much for coming over and chatting with us. Well, thanks and for doing what you do, <laughs> and, and thanks to the the fans that I I happen to have acquired. <laughs> and my wife is my number one. Yeah, yeah, she's out here supporting you too. 
cheering over there too cool yeah. <laughs> that's right. awesome to have her along yeah that's yeah. really nice to have the support in the room and someone you can wind down with i think you talked about that too right yeah like a, yeah yeah i can really although i'm stressing her out like crazy <laughs> while she's watching the mash it's just yeah <laughs> yeah she's got more available though i think it's okay you yeah can lean I know, a little, I right know. right yeah yeah you're burnt out <laughs> over the board share a little everyone sleeps better but right. okay rest up enjoy your All dinner right. will thanks, thanks so much Nick. for chatting right. with me and we'll be back at 10 with more will snellings i do believe Bye, everybody. <laughs> What's up, Marta?
Hey guys, this is Mark Olson from Backgammon Galaxy. In this video, we're gonna show you the Adventure Board, which is one of the new boards from the Backgammon Galaxy collection. The idea of this board is luxury travel. That's the concept of this board. For you, those of you guys like me who don't wanna play at a lousy little travel board, we designed this board so you get the full luxury experience even though you're just playing on a, on a small travel board. So let's have a look. Uh, it has this beautiful black frame. We covered it with leather so that it can take some scraps here, no problem. And let's open it up and have a look at this beautiful board. So it comes with this super cool, travel friendly checker box. Let's open it and you know what, let's put it over here. And uh, the checkers are 35 millimeter checkers, so they're smaller than a regular tournament board. But uh, you still get exactly the same high quality checkers as you do on the earth board or the void board. They're beautiful, these checkers. Small, travel friendly, a joy to play on. I personally don't like playing backgammon on all these cheap little travel boards, so this board is just perfect. You know, if you're going to the beach club or to a cafe or you just wanna hang out with your wife or girlfriend, have a quick game. I think this is the perfect board. We kept all the luxury details, the design, the checkers. It even comes with these proper cups here and, and a beautiful doubling cube. The dice, as you can see, it's a, it's a real luxury backgammon board. You know, it's just smaller dimensions. Can you play a, a, a big tournament on this board? You could, but it's a little bit small, but you could because of the, the high quality. But that's not what this board was meant for. We maximize portability and luxury. And uh, yeah, we, we're very proud of this board. Let me show you how small this board actually is. Here we have a comparison. This is the void board in the background, and this is the adventure board in the front ground here. <laughs> As you can see, this is so much smaller. You can have it in your backpack or your beach bag, so easy to carry around. You can just grab it by under the arm and it doesn't weigh much. And uh, yeah, it's just incredibly beautiful from the outside as well. It comes in three different colors, I believe. We might make more color combinations in the future, but for now we have the, the green earth board as well. And then of course we have the, the Galaxy Neptune Blue. Yeah, so it comes in different color combinations. I'm very happy <laughs> with this board. I used it several times during the recent year. It's just a pleasure to finally have a luxury portable travel board to carry around. So that's all for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Where is Mishi, guys? I'm ready to roll the dice. Hey, Mishi! Mishi! Hello, everybody. I'm Ali Çetin Belene. I'm part of UBC Contender 2022. And now you see me with a white board, which is my favorite board, actually. The best thing that I like this board is the checkers. You, it feels like a stone, man. And also, uh, I like simple design here, and I, I also like the sound when the uh, dice hit the frame or uh, checkers hit the frame. I really can't wait for the next year UBC uh, to play with these uh, lovely boards. Bye everybody. What's up Backgammon fans? In this video we're gonna show you one of the coolest products that we have in the Galaxy web shop. The new doubling cubes. And look at this cool little uh, box that it comes in. It comes in three different colors. The Earth, the Neptune and the Moon cube. So let's have a look at them one by one. The Earth cube, it's beautiful and custom made with the G for galaxy, 
it's really really cool and the earthboard colors obviously then we've got the neptune and the neptune colors and then we've got the moon which is this grayish Dublin cube like I think this is probably some of the coolest Dublin cubes ever made they are for sale right now in the galaxy web shop so why don't you go in and place an order for these amazing cubes thank you guys for watching this video see you next time the backgammon galaxy mobile app star membership high analysis blunder database private games coin games rating games and much much more What's up, Backgammon fans? This is a video about the Galaxy Dice Tower. It's lightweight, it's compact, it's made of this nice material. It unfolds very easily. Let me show you how. You insert your hands here, you hold the sides, and you press, you press, and you press, and now you have a Dice Tower. It fits perfectly there. We designed this to be lightweight and travel friendly, but we also designed it to be silent. Unlike other dice scramblers that are usually made of plastic and make an awful lot of noise, this dice tower is nice and silent because of the soft materials that we used. Yeah, it unfolds just as easily. You just do the same, just in reverse. You push, you push, and you push, and yeah, that's it. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time. Improve your backgammon skills by reading the best books on the market. Available on Amazon. Links in the description below. What's up Backgammon fans, this is Mark Olsen from Backgammon Galaxy. In this video we're gonna show you the newest edition of the Earth Board. So let's reveal the new Earth Board. It looks like an Earth Board because it is, but what, do, what did we change here? We changed the wood. It was beautiful before, but I think it became even more beautiful. This wood here is absolutely stunning, in my opinion. Let's open up and see what else changed. Ah, the lovely earth board here. We got the checker box. Let's open the checker box. There we go. So another little feature that we changed uh, are the hinges. As you can see here, we put the hinges on the outside, which just leaves this much more narrow hinge. And I think it gives for a better look, to be honest, but it's also more robust. Then the corner joints are slightly different. Again, a little upgrade to make the bore more durable and more robust. But, you know, it's still the same earth board as the first edition. Very small changes. You still have the same feel. These dimensions that I love, the, the short dimensions, I think it gives for a better playing experience, to be honest. Especially here, the height dimension, as you can see, you can't even put 11 checkers here. I really like that. I find it a little bit annoying to reach too far. And, uh, and also, I think you play a little bit better because your eyes don't have to travel as much. Yeah, the beautiful wooden frame. I still that, love that as well. Uh, you got It comes with a MacFit uh, inlay, so you can change up the colors if you want. Buy some other checker colors as well and mix it up that way. Yeah, and, uh, and then we got the Galaxy slash FM Gammon Cube here. Yeah, this is the new Earth board, guys. I hope you like it. What's up Backgammon fans? In this video we're going to reveal a new revolutionary product. We've made a partnership with, uh, with a company called Tempest and uh, I have the product right here. So let's unbox and, and see what it is. Okay. This is the Tempest. It's basically an accessory 
that works in conjunction with your iPhone or smartphone. What it is, is a clock stand, super nicely designed by the way, where you insert your smartphone here and it uses the, the gyroscope in your smartphone with this lever that goes back and forth for turn, turn shifts. So you can basically set any clock setting you want on the, on the smartphone app, which is super easy. You insert it and then you've got yourself a backgammon clock. It's super cool, beautiful, easy to transport. Uh, yeah, and we, we've got Tom from Tempest to introduce himself. Thanks, Mark. And hello, backgammon fans. I'm Tom Lakovic. I'm a product designer from Portland, Oregon, USA. And I'm the inventor of the Tempest game clock. The idea with Tempest Clock was to create something so simple based on the amazing user interface we already all have in our pockets and the high definition screens and the high visibility um, and just pair it with something that belongs with a luxury board. We played so much online. We've really become accustomed to different timings, speed games and so on. So now that we're finally coming back to over the board play, we're excited to bring some of that excitement of timing. It's just kind of more exciting, more fun, more gamified, if you will, to play with a game clock. And we've created one that's easy to use, that's beautiful and smart. So with that, I'll send it back to you, Mark. It's your move. Thanks, Tom. So let's have a look in action here, how it is. I've downloaded the app with the QR code that came with the box. Now I'm gonna choose backgammon. I'm gonna set the time bank to, let's say 10 minutes. Let's, if we play a five point match, the delay is already at 12 seconds. Yeah, here it is. Insert the smartphone, pressing play. Here we go. So let's see, okay. Six, four for black. Uh-huh. White, 6-4, white hits, really nice, I love this sound. It's got this bass sound to it, I really like it. I love this product, it's so simple, it took literally 10 seconds to set up. The app, very low in terms of battery drainage, so you can just put it into flight mode and it'll last all day basically. So that's super cool. You can connect a power bank as well, but you don't need to. We have a deluxe model as well, so that's the one we have right here. So let's have a look at this one. Here's the instructional manual, and this is the deluxe model. This natural wood, wow, this is beautiful. I'm super excited to have this product available in the Galaxy web shop. I'm going to be using it myself, that's for sure. Thanks for watching, see you guys in the next video. What's up Backgammon fans? This is Mark Olson from Backgammon Galaxy. In this video, I'm gonna share with you guys what are my favorite Backgammon color combinations. So here with me is the Void Board. Most of you guys probably know it already. And as most of you guys probably also know, the Void Board comes with changeable inlays and changeable checker colors. So this color combination, Wilson showed it to me yesterday. I played a couple of games on it and it just, for whatever reason, it just works out amazing. So we've got the purple checkers and the orange checkers. And look at this. Look how sick this is. So it's on the void inlay, which is quite low on contrast, but high, quite high on how cool it is. But when you put the purple and the orange checkers, look how they just jump out of the board contrast all of a sudden is very high and uh, yeah it's just it just works you know it's just amazing i also want to say these void checkers void board checkers are probably the best checkers that we've ever done i'm really proud of these checkers i love them it's like uh, almost like a marble stone almost like even though it's still the basically the same checker technology. We put the finish on them in a way so they just look absolutely stunning. It's, it's a, the matte surface rather than glossy uh, sur surface coloring. Uh, yeah, so this, this color combination, isn't it something? Leave a comment below. Uh, what do you guys think? Is it too crazy or uh, am I right here? So that's all for this video, guys. Thank you very much. See you next time.
that sugar sweet You got what I need Sipping on the potion All that good emotion Just my kind of heat Keep it on me, beep Testing by the potion Loving this to potion You always take me so high You always make the high 
you're stuck in a hurricane Cause everything around you just keeps on turning I can see you searching for a escape The fire in your heart, it just keeps on burning Keeps on, it just keeps on You missed that room, huh? <laughs> hey, backgammon fans. Bill Riles here from Monte Carlo. Uh, we have a doubles match com coming up this afternoon. I was just laughing with one of the competitors, Nevzat Dogan. The, uh, the private streaming is being done, or the streaming is being done in the private room here at Monte Carlo, which is, uh, has always in the past only been used for the, the final match of the tournament. And uh, Nevzat, he was asking where he should go, and I pointed him in the correct direction. And he says, oh, that room? I like that room. <laughs> he won the world championship in whatever year it was, 2012, 13, 14. And uh, he says, oh, I like that room. Good memories. And I, so that's why I was laughing when I uh, came on the air here. But we're going to have a nice, uh, this is a round of 16 in the doubles. There were 100 teams in the doubles, by the way. Uh, down to the round of 16, and this will feature uh, Nevzat Dogan from Denmark and his partner Steve Hammond from Dallas, Texas. And um, the opponents are Chris Rogers from the UK and 
his partner, David Wells, who is an American, uh, has lived about quite a bit. I'm not sure exactly where he calls his residence right now. But two very strong teams. Um, and we're going to do what we have done uh, throughout the week with the uh, with the doubles matches. I'm give you a little introduction, uh, and then we're just going to turn off the commentator mic and turn on the board mics, and you'll be able to, to listen to the players, discuss their plays, discuss their strategy, whatever. So we're going to kick this off pretty quick. I want to remind you all at 2200 tonight in Monte Carlo, which is uh, – what four and a half hours from now we'll have the undefeated bracket final between sander lilhoff and wilcox snellings and we'll also have a round of 16 second chance match between fernando bracconi and tebow thompson but for now let's play some doubles thank you of course we don't need cheat. <laughs> not allowed to cheat okay what? how are we gonna win if we don't cheat <laughs> i don't know Take that off. Okay, good match, guys. Good match. Good match. Good match. What's six? Yeah, I think you just pick it up and try to keep our advantage. Looks like the obvious. Is nine point or hit to continue? I'm for the nine point. I think I love when stacking that. Yeah, I think it's so pretty. Let's do it. That's what we're after is pretty. Pretty backgammon. <laughs> and we got a pretty backgammon. It's not always right, but it's at least pretty. Yeah. What's double twos? You make the sale. Yeah. yeah. Great 
Come on here. What will help? Hmm? It will not help. <laughs> <laughs> he said I it's think not going to help. Uh, it's going to help. Wait, let me see. Look at it. It may not help, but it also doesn't hurt. No. So, I can't imagine it's too good with the 22 point anchor. That's our consideration right now. Yeah. I don't think they're going to take the key. But I could be wrong. Maybe it's a take. <laughs> I mean, we got two on the roof. It's a bit scary. But let's do it anyhow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now the money game, I will take that for sure. I don't blame you. Well, we're we going to seven points. Yeah. Short match. These are all short ones. Shot. Yes. Not, not this guy. This one. This one. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. Here. Yeah. And, and yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Let's think. This might be a split. Okay. Yeah, I like this one. Also, in money. If you give me points, I think. No. 
I think this is actually you spoken to this. Yeah. Here or double hit? Double hit. What do you think? Huh? I generally don't want double hits. So. But I like it now. Me too. A tick, but uh, don't do a tick. Okay. Do we have a double? No, still have it. I hope you're going to make this point, okay? Yeah. So I still have a tick. But if we make that point, it's got two flying. No, I still tick. So I don't tick a double. And that's it, that. That's all. What do you think? I will double it. But that's why I'm out of the turn. Like a Good one. Yeah. Even if I'm moving, you can take it. You can put me wrong. Now we are talking. Now we're talking. Yeah. Double? What do you think? Yeah. Okay. You like it. I always like to double. Yeah. We don't. Okay. No. They doubled this last one. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Twelve pips behind. Twelve pips behind. Boy, you count it that fast. Yeah. We have nine it's in the round. Oh. Interesting. Not sure. I would definitely take if we were losing to zero. Yeah, much more so. Not sure if we should be taking winning to zero. For money, it's a take, but this is not money. Hmm. What's the what's the a take? Yeah, I'm not really sure. This is a chance to make a mistake. <laughs> it's, not, it's similar to a double five. It's a bit better for them because they've got the five, double five blitz. So they've got the five. But they've only got two points as opposed to three. They've still got two guys back. Yeah, we have an eight point, but they also have uh, a lot of tackiness right now. Yeah. they got tons of checkers bearing on us. Even if they just roll like a four and split, for example, not loving it. If they double this last roll, I would know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most variations, even if they point on us here, we're still, still firing at the other one. Right, which is not great, though, right? No. So they they do have some. Let's see, they have three, two. Five two six two double six crushes double five crushes. It's tough. It's the score is the reason I'm leaning to the pass, but yeah. Draw a pass is all on double sixes. Is this not yours? I mean, just points or something else. I want to pass, I don't know if it's right. I have to pull down the six. It's a zero pass. Are you completely neutral about it? Um, no, I'm more inclined to take. Well, maybe we should take them. It's a lot of game left. We're down 12. Too bad there's not bluffing in back in. There's a tiny bit of bluffing. This might be a bluff right now, and I don't know it. <laughs> it might be a bluff. It's, uh, it's definitely not a bluff because it's a proper double. <sighs> I'm so not poking. Compare this to is known. what if they had made a point <coughs> and it would be a big pass? But they have that. I really uh, don't know. I think it's very close. Um, if you want to take it, you can take it. If you want to, I'll let it up.
Romerit. favorite to come in here. Okay. Could it give you that? Uh, not when I'm trying to do so. Okay. That gives you some confidence. Yes. Jeez. Oh, it's his best. Ridiculously important. It looks very easy. I don't see any options other than the six to two on the nine. Keep the anchor. Great. Great move, by the way. Necessary. Just make this in the country. Ooh. I didn't know it was fine. It's things like that. I, I forget okay. all the time. You feel like you're not. Hmm? One, uh, sorry, come back. Come back. Three for sure. Oh. Last one. Okay, do it. Okay, I, I do it. Yeah. I'm going to let that guy go. Not sure. Yep. Don't roll it again. <laughs> Flip the dice over. Unless he comes up here. Yeah, then it's okay. We want you to roll it again. Don't do it. We're not accommodating him. Beautiful. Come out here? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yep. 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 Looks like he may have been right about it being a tank. It looked like a pass right away, I'll tell you that. But. Okay, don't go. Yeah? No, yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah, you keep the check out. Yeah, okay. Crashing into the like dust. If you don't come out, they just break into pieces. Now we have five. But you, you kill your, your, your check out. I hope you will stop. race is illusionary because they will stop oh. it out most of the time. Stop. Yep. Run. 
Just because they're most of the time just crashing here. We're coming out unless we roll double twos. Double twos would make a three point. Two ones at that roll. Okay, how can you know what a four way, three away, three away center lays? Equities? I don't have them memorized. No, I don't you can feel them out. Wolsey's Law kind of situation here. What is Wolsey's Law? Uh, Wolsey's Law is if you don't know if it's a take, maybe it, you probably should double. Or if oh. you don't know it's uh, if you don't, <laughs> you know. Sure. Like my mother. I think so. What do you think? You're, you're not down in this. We're not down in I, I, I can't. Hey, why is this pretty close? They're up. 10 to 12 pips. 10 to 12 pips? Yeah, 12 pips, yeah. I, I'd like to take, but I don't know. You have to do uh, rules of six. Got to roll six. Pair of Para sixes would be nice. Yeah, of course. I think that's it. Okay. What do you think? You like it? I would tend to pass that one because it's hard to roll that many sixes. Yeah, I think yeah, you've got a lot of time to do both boxes. Double yes. back. Double boxes. Oh yeah, do mm, boxes. Trouble. Three double. Alright, one bullet. So I think you come out with the five. And make the eights. That way, when they roll at six, we have so much action. They got the two blocks. And double six. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, you do it. No. No. What do you think? We can just. But why not hit? Bury that one. Maybe. Not hit. Maybe we can. Ten. No, the the thing no, that is not dead. They are gonna hit us to come back. That's different. That is, we hit them. Five and sixes. So we can how, how many numbers don't hit? A lot. A lot. How many numbers don't hit? Uh, Twenty percent, for example. What do you think? I, I if we don't, they hit, they hit us. Then we come back. So better we hit them maybe the fan. Okay. Yeah. Maybe they can. So, it's almost fine. Yeah. So we and got he goes to come back. So we got one home now. Yeah. Yeah. This is the point? Yeah. Three. Just three. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> now we need boxes. Uh oh, he got them. Of course. Yeah, I think that's it. I need two points. Not such a bad roll. Now we need double fives. Mm -hmm. Say it was a good, good roll. Oh, jeez. Scared the shit out of me. He can't. He can't. We got a little more board, no. and he's got a block. No? Yeah. You want to crash our board? What do you think? He has to open for us. Okay. Look at it this way. Aces, deuces, and fives are bad. He rolls yeah. five deuce or something like that. But we don't catch one board. We still have both boxes. I take five and go. But we are in the, in the, in the race. If he has to go open again, it's just a little dangerous. Okay. We still have four point four. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Five and two. 
Peter Mist. Yeah, yeah, I think so. It looks clear. Right here. <clears throat> yeah, double blinds. Yeah, and this this way. Two on five. Hmm? Five, five, yeah, five, yeah, yeah, yeah. So rich. Oh, no, what a roll. Down boxes? Yeah. We are. Yeah. You are playing. Yeah. We yeah. we've decided not to cheat today. Well, you are able to catch all eleven rupees. Did we have? Well, you would have corrected us if we had them, right? Yeah. Did you accept this now? Yes. We accepted before. Yes. Okay. Yeah, they already asked. We cheat on every other day. Today is not the cheat no, day. Not today. <laughs> well, based on results, I guess you were right. That's a take. I thought well. I thought you guys made a good decision. But I wasn't sure. You don't need any job out here. You had opportunities to win. Don't get too comfortable, though. Cause I'm not comfortable at all. We're don't the comeback kids. I understand. I am not at all comfortable. I'm very uncomfortable. He's the comeback king. Yes. Yeah. Together, you guys are powerful. I can see that already. Cubs. The cube's very high right now. Yet. We don't care if we get Kellen. It's Crawford, right? Yeah. Okay. That's a good one. Four one. Huh? Yeah. 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 Okay. Great shot. And because it points, it must be the deuce. This play is out and hit. I don't think it's double tiger here. I'm sure. I'm not sure. I'm sure the six five is right. There's duplication, some duplication by coming out. Uh, aces are duplicated. I think we're trying to fight for like the 18 point, and we don't really need to gammon them. And it's very hard for them to actually hit two. Is it not about the same amount of shots? 
Uh, no, most twos and sixes don't do very good. They can't really comfortably hit with the six clean, right? One six, yeah, three yeah. six, four six. We get double shots back. I like the duplication of the aces, and I like not being stuck behind this little blockade. Okay. So I think this is the right idea. Here. Another consideration is I never come on two foot four. Yeah, so we like this position. I'm just going to win if you never come on two point four. Well, maybe I will come on. Two? Yeah. That gives him double fours. It's okay. Okay. He's pretty good at rolling double fours. Yeah. Tell you about two point boards. You did mention it. Yep. Hmm. Come on, buzz and buzz. Awesome for them. Well, just our best. Make the three point and come out with one. It's five four. Oh, I thought it was. Sorry. <laughs> I thought it was five five. <laughs> Looks like the three point, probably. Three point is really strong with those blocks. I can't really defend well. Just, yeah, I think the three point is the way to play. Boxes are threes. Yeah. Ooh. Boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, but not necessarily. We, uh, it's, probably, it's probably, it's probably right. What else are we gonna do? Have you ever heard the term "good night, Gracie"? <laughs> it can definitely. So what do we got here? Bad two four, bad four one. Often they're gonna be breaking the nine. I mean the mid. This is probably right. If we have to, we break this. Yeah. Not the end of the world. Let's look at play B real quick. Play, play B would out, be out with three and continue with one while they're weak. And this is hard for them to win, but I'm just saying. It also takes away our horror rolls like double four. Uh, well, double, we've got double one now this way. That's all right. Well, it's not horror. Double four is real horror because we end up like this. Double ones, we end up pretty flexible mm -hmm. and strong. We're not trying so um, take it back and let me look at it. We got lots of time, so let's take our time here. So we come down. Now, assuming that they can keep their, let's see how many crackers we have. Because that does really matter a lot. There's nine still, crackers. It's just no. There's there's, there's more because a lot of the times they roll 
small, they might be playing here and they keep the eight point. Things like six two and five three become crackers. Yeah. That's the, that, they only become crackers like half the time, right? Well, five three doesn't because you come off both. Oh, that's true. So it's only really six two. Uh, okay, I'm okay with the seven. I think it's close. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I want you to make the other play. Well, you saw an easy route to victory with the other play. Now it's a harder route. Yep. <coughs> Good shot. Oh. I think it's just out with two, probably. Lot of trouble. Maybe not. I mean, with that position, can they really prime us and? Contain us without blitzing us. Really hard. Looks like we come out with two. Come down here. We got. Uh, I mean, it's really hard for them to prime us without blitzing us. I would come out with two. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, hit. Hit and cover. Um, this also. Up there? Good. Yeah, it's good. Two on cold. Okay. Oh, good shot. Yeah, good close right here. Maybe Just do it. Ten Pre times. Prever preserves our board. Ten times, yeah. Uh oh. That's not good. So six, six. we'd like oh, to get I to the six. We want to kill our sixes ASAP, and I don't know if that's the best way to do it. It looks like it's probably okay. Well, this is another one. Yeah, because this kind of wastes, but it only wastes a pip, and it puts it in a good spot. I actually think you're fine with your first play. Okay. That's good. There's no two-row sequences. We can kill our sixes anyway, unless we roll a seven. No, no dice. So not no. I will I think we have a chance. Yeah. Hold on. No, I actually think it's the other now. This so way when we roll a six we can get it here. Yeah? Yeah. Kill the six. They're all forced. It's all forced. Leaves a bad double five. If you just come to the deuce, it doesn't leave a bad double five. Yeah, I still we're not that concerned. I think we're looking for long terms. How sick is it? Let me see this one for a second. This is like that mountain thing where you don't. This is probably. This is good most of the time. We do leave some shots. Six five, six four, six two. Yeah. yeah. And go back and let's see again. 
the other time in the world, hopefully. So, and the other is this. It's kind of a bad configuration, but you see this, yeah, this goes here. Yeah, I don't think this looks kind of nasty. Hmm. Actually, it's not there. I think it's low to four points. Well, the four points good long term. And if they were, I think it would be different if they weren't likely to crack this well. <coughs> but since they're likely to crack this well, I think we can go for this play. Yeah. Yeah, this is it. Yeah, I'm not giving us much pressure anymore. Are you saying that's a three point board? Put the pressure oh. on us now. Yeah, you put the pressure on me. <laughs> Sorry. Don't use Lunga and Duck. You can't use it. Duck is okay. Duck works just as well. Yeah. Unbelievable. Big duck. Duck a duck. Yeah. Y'all tried to help us out. You did. Yeah. We tried to make it exciting. You just didn't want to take your cue. <laughs> I think I like your run with the 5 2, Stephen. Back in that other position. I did not want you to run. Which one? 5 2. When you had four, the, the, the men behind that little prime. But I'm not sure. I was not sure at all. It was not clear. Is it okay? Yeah. We're going to find out later. Let's see if I didn't run. <laughs> Maybe we'll get a shot now. And they could fin ten times on a three point board. Uh, He's odd now. <laughs> There's always hope in you. It's like uh, you have a, you say, yeah, I love your soul, but brother. Jim Carrey on Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> yes. Yes. Telling me there's a chance. So I have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a great movie. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Good luck. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Seven to zero. That's embarrassing. Thank you. Good luck, guys. Yeah, Cheers. Thank you. Are you going to play? Ten? No, I think it's tomorrow, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I wonder Cheers. if we had a take on that blitz position. Well, he's, he's, I think he just transcribed it. Oh, yes, have a look. Yeah. Yeah, I was really on defense. I kind of wanted to pass it. Let's hope you didn't lead us down I the think road. Gonna, I think he's going to be a pass. I feel like it, the way it played out initially. Like, satisfaction. Make a move, baby, you got nothing to lose. So give me that, give me that, give me that good reaction. Gonna make it right, little like an offer I can refuse. Okay, Baggammon fans, a quick and painless, perhaps, dispatch quickly of uh, Nevzat and Steve by Chris and David. So, um, 
gives us a little bit more time for a quick bite before we start setting up for the 10 p.m. matches. But at 10 p.m. tonight, two matches. Dream one. Wow. Can it get any better than this? Uh, Fander Lilhoff and Wilcox Snellings in the undefeated final. The winner of this will be guaranteed a spot in Sunday's grand finale and will receive an 8,000 euro bonus for having won the undefeated bracket. So, and let's see, on stream two, we're going to have the pairing of Thibaut Thompson from Switzerland versus Fernando Bracconi from Italy. So a couple of good matches coming up at 10 p.m., which is three and a half hours from now. So alert your uh, family, friends, and neighbors. Wilcox Snellings and Sander Lilhoff is going to be fun. So uh, we'll see you then. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll be back in three and a half hours or so. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.
Dreaming over by the time.